We'll see what you guys guess in Zoro. Uh, okay. Weird. Guessing Zoro. That's weird. weird. Who would guess Zoro? The deck's not good. deck's terrible. The deck is awful right now. Actually. Terrible leader. No one should be playing Zoro. Yeah. Just give me all your alt art Zoros. It's yeah, fine. they're going down. They're tanking in price. They're tanking in price, offering $5 each on the alt arts. Marcos are a nickel now, so it's yeah. whatever. I have a few quarters in my car that'll work too. I mean, a big, you know, Red didn't win the grand, uh, uh, the grand, op or not the grand open, the uh, flagship. Yeah, that, it did yeah, not. It did not. It did it, not. It's in the finals, but it didn't win it. So, like, Red's just dead at this point. Yeah, Red's... Red, Red, horrible color. No one's going to play Red. All right, looks like they are rolling the dice there. I cannot tell what he rolled. Uh, there's at least a two in there. And that, that looks, looks six. That looks a little bit more, yep. Well, we will determine who's going first based on that, but... Ooh. Ooh, it is the Zoro. Zoro. Whoa. What? Wild. What? Why is Crazy. he on Zoro? He, he, caught, he chopped off the green half of his leader. What happened? What happened? I guess he really wanted that extra life. He, he must have. Yeah, he was so jealous of all these other leaders having five life and being overtly strong. He said, I don't want to play red-green anymore. Yeah, so they're... They're good to go. So, starting the timer. Timer has been started. Not that, like, unless if someone's, like, playing Dofi and, like, or, like, essentially just blue, right? Yeah. Like, I, I don't know. It's really nice to have, like, time not really be an issue in this card game. Law mirrors sometimes. They do go long. They do. I did play a few practice games. I'm not the best law player, but they do go long. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Especially if they take forever to find their five drop, like... Usually if they find the five drop, it goes pretty quickly, but trying to get there is, is rough. Yeah. All right, so neither player lacking their opening hand. Yeah. Going from there. So both players mulliganing. Uh, I think the ideal start for um, Michael here on Zora would probably be like searchers early and then probably some mid to late game bombs such as the Marco and maybe Teach. And I think that Greg here is just going to establish uh, Parasparo. Yeah, yeah. So I, honestly, like if you if Michael was playing Law, I think Law has a really good matchup for this too. So, yeah. um, but I, I think yeah, Zora still is, is good. It's just you have to have that early momentum. If you don't really give them the chance to play a ten drop, then you're you're in a good spot. Right. I think Michael here chose to go second. Um, Typically, Zoro wants to go first, but I think taking the second play advantage away from Katakuri is very good. Mm -hmm. um, they obviously want to go second. They have their four drops, very heavy four drop slot. But now you kind of leave an option for them having to take a turn extra to play all their cards. Yeah, and so he, he looked at the top five, found a teach from it, and then... Uh, Greg is reading the teach. Read. Okay, I was like, whoa. Well, uh, let's let's read with him, shall we? Yeah, Teach is a very good going second card. Um, I think this is the, probably the best turn two play that's not the most aggressive one. Mm -hmm. But I think establishing this card in this matchup is actually very important. Yeah, yep. Ye Yellow doesn't really have a lot of removal options. So uh, outside of... I mean, it usually has like chunkier swings than usual, but it doesn't have any like easy removal, I'll say. The main like form of removal that Yellow has access to would probably be like Thunderbolt for the most part. Mm -hmm. um, and that's going to crit them a life. Yeah. So you're really kind of keeping the advantages red still there. They're losing a life to get rid of the body, and the body already swung. It's like a, the body already took a life. Yeah. So it was pretty good overall trade, I would say. And here you just see Greg doing a 5K swing with leader, and then going in the Parasparrow here. Parasparrow, yeah. very important card to establish in this matchup. Yeah. It is. It is. I don't know. It, it doesn't look like it's a one piece card in this spot. Like it. It, it has good card draw and cycle, right? Like. Most other colors don't have any form of like, you know, you get to play it for free on tempo if you trigger it. You get to, uh, you know, recur the cost when it gets KO'd. And most removal is KO based in this game. So. Right. And it is very strong. I think that Parasparo has um, a very good trade rate. So. Yes. It can, it can find itself, which is very it's, unusual for, yeah. for these kind of cards. And I always like these types of cards, the cards that have on KO effects. Like last set, we saw Magellan sometimes popping up, but mm -hmm. the five six is actually very relevant, the five cost. Yeah. Uh, if you KO, it's almost sending you back a turn. These cards that have negative impacts for you as the opposing player when you KO them makes them very strong. And the Paris Bros is just one of those targets where it's like, all right, I'm going to swing five at you each turn. It's either going to take a card in your hand each turn or you're going to give me a card, which is a very big setback for the most part. 
Yeah, so we're, we're looking here. We have Paro attacking on in, uh, going down to three life. So that was a 6k swing, and then a 7k with Katakuri using the effect here. And so you, you kind of want to be aggressive with Paro. It's going to, you know, there's an easy route for removal next turn if you go Gordon on it and then using the Marco to pop it. So uh, you do have to be a little bit careful of that. And Michael taking this extra hit here. Oh, going man. Going down to two. I don't know how good it is going down to lower lives in this matchup mm -hmm. for the most part. And you're just going to see Greg here probably establishing their Paris Barrow. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And this is probably the best card against Zoro just because it can clear the board if it needs to, but it's also just there. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. And as the Zoro player, taking life early is not beneficial in this matchup because in the later game, they play these cards like the seven cost big mom, the 10 cost where they're just basically going to crit you a life each time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you need to be faster in this matchup for the most part, but Michael kind of has a board set up to do that. So we'll have to see here. Yeah, because you, normally you see like a bunch of one cost and two cost, uh, you know, searchers come out and then you have a bunch of swings for easy late game. But, you know, we've established a Gordon, which removes. We've you know, establish a teach, which gets, you know, removal later, so. And this is just a 7k t swing with teach here. And let's see here. And, ooh, oh. trigger there. Cracker, very good card. I think it's one of the best generic yellow cards in the game. Yes. Um, And the fact that he did get it there, he's not at a lower life total, so it's not threatening double attack at all. But it is still an extra body that you have to worry about. Yeah, and I, I think just the idea of, like, uh, one, like, I, I always say this, I'm probably going to say it for, like, the next month, but just, like, it gets the plus 1k in both turns if you're lower, so on the opponent's turn, you, it's still a 6k if you're lower. Um, doesn't happen too often, but it is a, a nice little perk for it. And, uh, yeah, I did play the, the Marco there, which should get the removal, and uh, it helps you out there as well. And here you go. You see KO in this Paris Sparrow is basically... The opponent's saying, if you want to kill this card, go for it. I'm going to find a card to play for the next turn. He picked up the 7-cost uh, Lin Lin card. Yeah, so the 7-cost uh, gives your opponent a choice, uh, but it's you know a pretty formidable body on the board if you play it on curve. And you are playing on Odd Dawn for Gregory because of uh, since you were forced to go first. So a uh, pretty good card for like your, your weird matches where you don't get to go second. Yeah. And I would say here that if he plays the card, I think Michael has a hard choice. Mm -hmm. If he takes a life, he goes to one. And the board is now two 5k bodies and a Lin Lin that's an 8k. And you have the leader swing still. Yeah. So we're potentially going to zero that turn. But if you give him a life, you put him at four, and it feels like we haven't done a lot this game. For sure. So it's definitely a harder choice, I think, in that shoes. Or maybe here we could see him run out a Shirohoshi. Probably uh, five cost, draw three, discard two. Mm -hmm. Just to set up a play of maybe Katakuri on the nine cost turn to put the five K or put the five cost Shirohoshi in life. Kind of a way to get two triggers of that, which is very good because churning cards in this deck is huge. Mm -hmm. You play a lot of bricks in your deck, so it's very important to kind of cycle it out and try to not end up with all these um like the big moms the para sparrows all these cards that don't have counters on them yeah and you're swinging here and you have to get these 2ks out of your hand like we already saw jozu for the the cracker swing and we're not even you know we're not even seeing the katakuri swing yet which is you know an easy 7k most of the time yeah it's kind of tough here um going down to one is never a spot you want to be in especially against yellow because they're going to put a lot of pressure on you yeah, and then like yeah, if you if you have board and you're ahead in life on turn ten, you pretty much win the game most of the time. Yeah, I think Michael is gonna pitch for this five k swing here, because we saw that Greg got the seven cost big mom, mm -hmm. which is probably his play this turn. Yeah, which means he's just gonna have another five k swing coming at him. For sure. Yeah, and we have I think just under fifty players today, so we should have five or six rounds of Swiss, and then we are going to be going into a top cut of top eight afterwards, which will be best of three, uh, and you know high stakes. We do have. Uh, a case split across the top eight. I think first yeah. place gets five or six boxes from it's it. Five so. boxes. Of yeah, yeah. Opo three. And it's a fresh case, so it could be anything. Yeah, anything. Okay. I had to look behind that. It's still there. <laughs> 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 that that case has seen the world. Let me tell you, it is it has traveled the world just to get here. And here we go. Seven non here for the seven cost big mom, and Michael taking the choice to crit the life. It's not an easy choice, but I think you have to make it just mm -hmm. to try and establish a board here. You need to somehow get into a position of trying to win the game, and especially by taking the life, this is the only way you can do so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, you know, you and on the same thing, you have to play this Linland early because if they go down to zero, it just it it's just a vanilla at that point, yeah. right? So, um, 
Yeah, which is why I I like I like uh I like Hocus, but man, it's a uh, you know turn eight. It's just like, what are you doing? My deck in my hand, like it's doing nothing. But like turn two or three, like the first right. hit hit in life, like boom, yeah. easy, easy take. And typically, this is how the Zoro matchup goes. Sometimes I think if Michael had a more explosive start mm -hmm. with the one drop searchers into maybe a Makino to start buffing those up and swinging, we get more cards out of the hand that way. Yeah. And that's going to kind of put Katakuri in a spot to start taking life earlier. Mm -hmm. If we get them to two or three very early in the game, it's very beneficial for us. But for the most part, we saw him just go turn one, grab a teach, play teach, do all these types of things. Yeah, because yeah, we, he's got like some good uh, like board presence, I guess, like chunk your bodies and was able to kind of go back and forth. But and we're going at life still. Interesting. All right. And, oh, oh another, another cracker. cracker. Man, he's so good. He, what? There's two. There's been two in life already. Yeah. That is unfortunate. Yeah, and like you, you you have to discard one, but like traditionally, the discard one is a counter you would have had to use right. where. Uh, if you didn't have a cracker on the board. It usually makes sense to do it. Yeah. And you, you just have so much potential for dead cards in hand because we saw a, you know an event card just get pinched from Gregory for that. So. Yeah, the event card, very good in life. Mm -hmm. Not very good in hand. No, no. Because when you get to these later turns of the game, you're tapping out for all these bombs you're playing. You're not going to leave too open for this. Yeah, this this is why we play the starter deck instead. You put it on top, <laughs> easy. You fix your, your life, and Absolutely. you get another life. Broken effect. Yeah. 100 percent let's see and uh we'll, we'll probably talk about rebecca in between matches i don't think this one's going to go to time i do not foresee this one going to time either but yeah you you definitely know a, lot, a little bit more on on uh on that one i i went to bed like a reasonable person you i stayed up and watched it yeah the whole thing yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah definitely a lot of very good cards in that set yeah so and here, yep, I would do this swing exactly the same. Try and contest the board. I'm at one life, and we're going to nine dawn next turn, so we don't have to fear the um, the ten cost big mom. That's but true. There is a lot of pressure on the board. Seven uh, k swing. Is he going at life or the para sparrow? Uh, seven. I'd. I would say probably life, right? Maybe. Parasparrow is really tempting, right? So if we go after Parasparrow, he gets the search. If we go after life, though... Uh, cracker number three. Oh, oh my man. gosh. A second body to play. That, his, I mean, okay. So it's coming to a point where you did have to discard three cards to get this out, right? So it's, it's non-trivial for that. But for the most part, you're discarding. Oh, and this is not what you want to see. A whiff off the buggy right afterward. Yeah. Trying to find a rad beam or some form of defense here for this aggressive turn coming up. Yes, he did have to discard uh, three cards, but the cards he discarded all had bricks. Yes, so sure. If you were trying to survive another turn, they don't do anything. Yeah, yeah. But developing the board here is insane. The takeaway, I. I think discarding a card to play these is fair enough, mm -hmm. but the takeaway of building the board, especially in this pivotal turn, is absolutely insane. Yeah, because in general, you're just trading cards for hand for Dawn, and, and when you're trying to go offensive, cards in hand usually mean nothing, right? Unless yeah. like there's red and you have like a Magura or Makino, they can sometimes get that boost, but cards are really only good on the defense, and if they have no defense power anyways, like you said, it's an easy pitch. Yeah. And right here, it's looking not so great for Michael here. I mean, we have all these attacks. That smoothie could become a 7k. It could. And you could you, you could, could put the 7k into leader, and if they don't take it, you get an extra 7k off the cracker because it's 0-1. Yeah. to one. So I think our turn is looking like swing a lot of 7s at him. Yeah. And maybe get to that point. Because we have a lot of... I mean, if this turn is not just managing 9 Dawn to try and end the game this turn, because I think Michael has like five or six cards in hand mm -hmm. even if he doesn't have five cards it's still a lot of damage sevens take at least one or two cards out he did leave three dawn open so guard points and rad beams are still in play but they're still getting cards out of the hand and we could probably win this turn let's see yeah we're sitting somewhere between 45 and 50 i think right now we did have a couple of people last entry and also so olympus is a is a store so Understandably, some people went to the store and not here. So uh, there's a little, a couple late entries, but yeah, um, yeah, very, yeah, ha happy with the turnout here. And again, like just a condensed amount of skill for these, for a lot of these players. 
So we should have about five or six rounds of Swiss, and then we're going to a top eight cut afterwards. If you get in top eight, you get six pack or half a box guaranteed. Yeah. Half box, half box. Yeah, and I'm I'm curious to see like I haven't I've done no best of three in this game, so uh, and that does make a difference in a lot of these matchups too, or like adjustments and stuff. And here you go. He's going a five k swing here, which makes me think he's going to drop another bomb, maybe mm -hmm. a um, a cat curry, maybe another seven cost. But yeah. if you play another seven cost, I think you play it earlier. Mm -hmm. Try and say either pitch life, give me a life type of deal. Yeah. To get him in this position. Yeah. Again, like Gregory does not have a lot of credit. Like he's got a good board, but pitching three is a lot, a lot in this game. So you have to think that there might not be a lot of defense power in there. Here we go. A seven K swing at lead here. And guard point probably to get out. Either guard point or rad beam. I'm guessing guard point. Yep. Ooh, I was right. Guard point. <laughs> Dang, I lost the fifty fifty chat. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah, we were talking about it. If you if you want to be full full aggression, you yeah, you swing the smoothie, you get the the take the life, and if they don't take the life from the seven K swing, then you're you get another free seven K. Yeah. So So it's definitely a lot of management like that, but that's if we were trying to go for a game. Yep. Maybe Greg was thinking he can apply pressure with maybe a few five K swings, play another bomb, pass a turn. Mm -hmm. But I think if you do that you you lose the game. Uh, he has still two bodies. He has three bodies in play. Mm -hmm. So you're swinging at you four times, and you just pitch three cards to this, um, to the cards last turn. So yeah. All right. So smoothie. Okay, they are going to take it. Okay. So again, a little, a little bit rough in uh, sequencing, but that's fine. All right. Probably another rad beam. Okay. Another guard point. So another now we point. just need to get out of two more attacks. Unless he plays rush. Katakuri. I was going to say rush Katakuri <laughs> can get you there. That is the only case. I think Michael only has two, three cards in hand. I think you can just make it big enough. Like, assuming, like, he did leave three open, right? So you got to, the mind games are there, right? We can go 10 11 here. 10 11 is pretty big. Um, 11 guarantees that you get Rad Beam and two cards out. So mm -hmm. 11 connects regardless here. It's if the 10 connects, which is the issue. Yeah, and do we know, do we have any other knowledge about cards in hand? Because I don't think we do. I do not believe so. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah. If you, if you, case we're probably, yeah. If you were wanting to commit to winning this turn, yeah, definitely use the smoothie effect. Get the seven k for free, and then it would have been one less for the cracker to get another seven k push. And yeah. uh, I mean, you put two down on the smoothie and take a life. That's nine k. That's nine k. Yeah. Very big body. But you don't, you don't want them to take the damage because then if they do, then the, the you want them to counter out of it, right? Right. It's it's a weird. It's a weird kind of decision making. It is very weird how that goes. Yeah. I think if we were to win, I think our best attacks are like 10, 11. Yeah, I think that's it. Because we've used two Dawn. We are at nine, so we have seven open. Yeah. Oh, we're going nine here. Or 10. 10 here, yeah. Yeah, 10, 11. Yeah. 10, 11, yeah. I think that's the way. Look at the card in life, just so you have, I guess, knowledge there. I did not see what it was. but So if Michael goes rad beam 2k here, he's he wins. out of the 11, and then... Oh, okay, he's just he does take not. It. Oh. Okay, okay. Whitebeard Pirates. Grab a 2k here. You and then his hand has to be perfect counters. Big Marco. Guy. Yeah, so he's a 1k. Marco. Yeah. And then Big Mom try to finish game. There oh, it is. All right. Gregory takes it. Dang. Gregory will take it here with Katakuri. Yeah, if you had uh, one more, if like Buggy found a Rad Beam, you probably think, actually yeah. won. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. it all comes down to that. And obviously with all these searchers in Zoro, it's very hard to get to that point of you will whiff off most of them. Yes. Or yeah. off some of them. I shouldn't say most of them. There are some games where you go like Buggy, first turn, it's all Whitebeard Pirates. Then you go Ezo, all event cards. So really it comes down to that for the most part. Yeah, yeah. Well, we, we have some extra time. We can maybe bring Gregory in, too, and see what he's... Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, we, we, have got, we got the time. Let's do it. Let's do it. And we don't really have it in between, so uh, you're just stuck with me. Sorry. Yeah, you got so many... You got he did get a lot of triggers from life. That was crazy. Doing well. How are you doing, Gregory? I'm chilling, man. How about you? I'd be chilling, too, if I hit so many triggers off my life. That's <laughs> that's great. That's a yeah. good thing we're in person, because if you're online doing that, people are like, oh, he stacked his life. Easy, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> I'm not gonna, you know, 
wiped out the haters. I I did get lucky, right? No, no. But I think I think like, it was I think it was super well played. Um, obviously yellow's the new color in this game right now, right? Um, what what made you choose category? Like why why try the new stuff? I just like life manipulation, you know. <clears throat> life manipulation's pretty cool. I never really in the card games that I played, I mm -hmm. never really seen life manipulation has been a bad deck. Sure. Yeah. So I just think it's overall strong. Mm -hmm. The only thing I will say about yellow is I feel kind of iffy about Katakuri. Mm -hmm. Like it feels strong on pa um, the A cost specifically. The A cost, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, on paper it sounds really strong. You know, being able to just get rid of an A cost like that, but at the same time you are giving your opponent a life. A life, yeah. So yeah. it's it's weird to decide. Yeah, I've been I've been having an. Issue. Are you running it today? I am. I'm currently running two. I feel like I was on three originally, but even then, that felt like too much. Yeah, based on like it's really good if you're due at eight, and then you ten drop afterwards because you can. If there's like something you really want to get rid of, you can trash. That's true. But yeah. otherwise, it's just stuck in your hand a lot of the time. But luckily, yeah. if you have all these triggers in your life that make you discard one to play them, easy. It's the, the first pitch, right? Yeah, I would also say too that if you're kind of planning ahead, which is kind of the key to being better at one piece mm -hmm. if you kind of like caught a curry a card like i can't think of a specific example but generally speaking if there's a card that you want to get rid of but you don't want them to damage it back into their hand mm -hmm. and you're able to somehow lend lin it yeah the 10 10 cost lin -lin, 10 cost yeah and just put it in their trash then yeah you're you're chilling yeah yeah you're yeah. super chilling because most of the time you, you just try to get to the late game and uh, yeah, yellow. Yeah. I, I think. Uh, I think he got. Michael was a little bit unfortunate. He didn't see a lot of his his early searchers and in his pour late game. Out, you know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> pour one out. But uh, yeah, if the buggy hit like a radical beam, he probably won that game. I think. Yeah, I he he had three opened on. I thought in every scenario that I I've been in a close situation like that where mm -hmm. they have like two or three opened on, they always almost always have the right amount of events. Yeah. But then I was like, oh, man, he has the rat beam. And then when I hit it, I was like, he didn't he have didn't it. He didn't have that it, was yeah. Like, yeah. That was like a crazy thing for me. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. And so, I mean, there is a lot of just, it's a card game, but there's a lot of bluffing and seeing, you know, if they don't, they. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I rarely, I rarely get bluffed on. I'm not going to yeah, lie. Yeah. Did you, did you start that turn thinking that, okay, I have to finish this turn and go in all the way? Or were, were you kind of testing the waters and then realized maybe you had a hit? Uh, honestly, against Zoro. I didn't even see myself making it to 10 Dawn. Sure. Because it's oh, you didn't. You got to 9, right? I did get to 9. <laughs> but I, I actually won the dice roll. Yeah. And when you play Katakuri, in my opinion, you want to go second just because your curve is better on even. Mm -hmm. But then I was like, man, if I go second, that, that guy's just going to steamroll me if mm -hmm. he goes first. Like, Zora going first is just that strong. So I just decided to go first, deal with a mediocre curve and then see what happens and i think i i think i got pretty yeah. fortunate like i was able to hit the seven cost lin, lin on yes on curve yeah on curve. very strong uh i was able to get a lot of my pair of sparrows out while at the same time using the katakuri leader effect mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so i think i think that went uh pretty well yeah yeah i think it's close and you did a really good job in identifying that you know this is i have to push for the win here because i either win here or lose next turn with with all the pressure they can do and because you only had like one or two cards in hand right at the end <laughs> yeah because you have to keep pitching yeah. them from all your triggers so <laughs> yeah i i mean which is I, it's good it worked out right yeah so. i mean i know yellow can kind of luck sack you but i was like man first round of the tournament man, yeah I'm, on stream like Ooh, okay good yeah. <laughs> how, how can this game <laughs> for sure for sure well cool well thank you very much do appreciate it 100%, uh man. good luck for the rest we'll see you in the top eight right <laughs> my luck or dog my way to it yeah sure. yeah all right. if you didn't use all your luck for this match right yeah probably oh me oh, I still no got no way you oh, got please please ton in the bank for sure yeah of course it was nice talking with you man for sure thank you very much of course you have a good one all right we'll drag nico back over i suppose <laughs> and uh so what, what are your thoughts on this matchup um well i'll tell you what i played katakuri last night sure played against newgate twice yes i lost both of them okay i could not tell you how this match was supposed to go. I know that both decks want to go late in the game. Mm -hmm. I know that Newgate's best play late in the game is a nine cost that says they don't take life. Mm -hmm. And Yellow's is one that makes your opponent take life. Yeah, it's like never psych so, reverse card. You taking that life? So <laughs> we will have to see here how it's going to play out. Looks like both players are keeping after a mulligan. 
Yeah, it looks like that. Yep, six life to five, very even. Uh, and so, also, fun fact, the voice actor for Newgate is here this weekend, so uh, we'll see if he's able to stop by. Give us a few voice lines from Newgate. Yeah, apparently, I haven't talked to him, but I, I talked to someone who did talk to him, and he's like, yeah, is Newgate good in this game? And you're like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> he, is, he is like half the game. He is crazy. He, he's very, very good. And I, honestly, like, jokes aside about him being, like, maybe too good, they did they did him justice, right, as a character for how this card game works in the sense, yeah. like, you know, he has extra life, he's extra powerful. Like, thematically, he's very, very on point. Yeah. I think they made him very good for a set or two, mm -hmm. seeing as his time on the show was for one yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, one time. <laughs> per, yeah, and then the... Uh, the just, one time hitter, and then he no verse shows up again. Yeah, he just took vacation. So it looks like since... <laughs> William Billy here. Yes. Uh, he, I guess, won the die roll because now he's going to go second. Yeah. So typically you want to go second here, and it looks like he didn't open up a pudding, which always happens sometimes. Yes. Sometimes don't open the pudding on the turn two play. And here you have MacGyver probably just sculpting his hand here, trying to set up his later game turns. We know the curve goes five cost. Yeah. That's a Marco, yep. So we have something to play next turn with a 6k swing, and then usually you want to go ace and then new gate. Mm -hmm. That is the optimal turn with this deck, and they're always turning sideways. Oh, Ooh, okay. Applying the pressure here. Turning sideways, as you said, but maybe a turn earlier, going down to 4, taking a uh, a 5k swing. Surely that means you're taking a 6k swing, right? It's oh, a 7k, a 7K swing. swing. This is exactly what most decks want to do against Katakuri. Apply a lot of pressure to it, make it so that it cannot get to those later turns in the game, or when it does get to those later turns in the game, it's more sketch. But, oh, a Paris Sparrow yeah. out of life. And an alt art one, no less. An alt art one, no less. I mean, we've only, we've, it's round two, and both hatches have, uh, you know, had Katakuris, but man, Paris Sparrow loves being in that life. It's just lives there. there. And that actually makes it so that this Machino play, you still clear two cards. Yes. Because I think MacGyver went into this turn with the knowledge of, I'm going to swing out, and he only has one attack next turn. Yes. Which means he either kills the Machino, the Izo, or he goes face, which relieves pressure off me mm -hmm. in some form of way. Yeah. But now, now... he gets to clear both bodies. Yes, for <laughs> sure. Which is very good going into this. And your next play next turn is swing six, play a Marco. So we'll have to see here. All right, and uh, yeah, just just thinking there with four dawn, uh, not usually best. Probably thinking about if they want to use the leader effect to you know put one down underneath. I think here you just clear the board because you don't really want to pressure Newgate too much in this matchup. Yeah. Oh. Oh. I would have turned the Paris Barrel. I would have turned it sideways. Yeah, for yeah, sure. Make him attack it, but. Interesting. So a fun thing I found out about this matchup is if you approach this matchup kind of waiting turns out, ooh, a rush Luffy coming down on turn five. We are all about the pressure right now. Wow. So this this is, I mean, this is looking more like the, I would say, like traditional version, right? A lot of them have transitioned to just like the mono white beard stuff, but Luffy is very strong still. It's a 6K body, and uh, if all of your cards that are sideways are 6Ks or more, they have to swing in. Like their 5Ks do nothing, right? Absolutely. And right now, it's looking pretty... I feel like we should have swung at the Machino. Because if Paris Pro dies, at least we get a card. Yeah, yeah. And it's you know one less swing that has to go to your face, too. Yeah. And now it's kind of tricky, because now you have to devote Dawn onto trying to clear the Luffy. And all your attacks are minuscule. You have to put at least two Dawn on your leader mm -hmm. for it to be an 8K swing at the Luffy. And what I found out from playing is that I feel like I don't want to pressure Whitebeard's face as much. Mm -hmm. Just because they will... And now we see here, I think these are attacks of the Luffy, which I makes sense. I believe so, yeah. All right, and then look at the top card of their life. Because later in the game, if they have no life, your 7 drops become worse. Your 10 drop becomes way worse. Mm -hmm. You're paying 10 just to gain a life. Yeah. So it's typically not beneficial for you to hit them a bunch because they're just going to take the lives. Yeah, and, and what are your thoughts about, like, running... Like, one thing I think the yellow is missing is it's missing out on a one... Like, a good one-cost counter. There are some that exist, right? Uh, but it just means, like, it's really tricky to... Like, if, it just feels bad whenever you feel like you have to leave one open or you just don't have, like, that extra investment for Dawn. You're just talking about, like, the event card, right? Yeah, yeah, the, the power mochi, yeah. I think. Or one of the mochis. Oh... This ace here is really going to punish this board. Yeah. We're going to see most of it cleared because they get minus 3k. The ace has rush too, but it's just going to be 
attacks at face. This is looking like an absolute just stampede right now of attacks towards William. Yep. Just thinking uh, about it. Thinking about it. He knows the 7K swing is either going with the Paris Parrow or him, and I think he's just going to go face with the Ace swing. Yeah, yeah. Make most sense. And MacGyver does not have a lot of cards in hand. I think he pitched four or five cards on that last turn. I think he has about three or four in hand. All right, gets out of it with a double pitch, yeah. Four. Yeah, but leaving the two open, you know, you'd think he'd have, like, uh, the, the Sovereignty or something, but just no, no plays from it. So my thought on running the one cost event is it has to do a lot. Yeah, it does. Because I guess reds gives them 4K? Yes. Or 3K even. 3K is still a lot. I just think that it has to do more. Mm -hmm. I think that their best one cost event comes in the uh, Yamato starter deck. It does, yeah. It's like a minus 3K on either a leader or an attacking card as a counter. Mm -hmm. Very good card. Very good. And then the trigger in life is pretty good too, right? Yeah, I think it's the same as like Ikoku Sovereignty. Yes. You can discard two to gain a life. Yeah. So... I'm no, I'm I am looking for that card. It yeah. is is waiting for it. I and think that if you are gonna play a one cost event, that is the one to play. Yes, because I think yeah. the power mochi or it's just not good enough. Yeah, it's. Let me bring it up. I'll bring it up just for. It is power mochi. All right, I kind of know what I'm talking about. Yeah. It's always a good feeling. It's always a good feeling when you know the card. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good content, but yeah, being able to use it for. Uh, for the effects of like what you looked, you, you essentially like the same thing as Katakuri effect, right? So you really don't even need it, right? It's sometimes okay in like Big Mom and stuff, but um, and then like the the trigger is the same thing, but yeah. So swinging in, taking the uh, look at the top life, keeping it there this time and as well. he finally goes, and there we see a Shirahoshi come down. Shirahoshi, the classic graceful charity from Yu-Gi-Oh, but this yeah. game it's on a five cost body, it has zero power. But if that Makino taps again, ooh, baby, you're getting in. We're swinging zero at it. Give me a card. Yeah. I'm actually a fan of this card at probably four most of these yellow decks. Uh, if you hit the trigger, it's absolutely insane. Uh, you draw three, discard two. Very good card out of life. Especially also, since you're playing a deck that just has so many dead cards in hand at time or just right. have no counter and they're, they're situational, being able to fix that is fantastic. You need to filter out those cards somehow. Yeah, yeah. And especially when you can set it up with a Katakuri type of turn on the following, where you can go Katakuri, put that in my life. Next turn I have it, especially against a non-yellow deck where they can't crit that life. Yeah. You just go, put it in my life. I'll do it again next turn on your turn. So very good way to filter the hand and draw a bunch of cards. So I wonder if he's going to search here for another ace and try to go for a power play, a Marco blocker. I honestly think that Marco Blocker is the best card against Yellow. Mm -hmm. They have to the their only way to remove the card through just pure and I guess you're just gonna play two of them. Yeah, yeah. two of them. Yeah, that's <laughs> and that is, uh, that is oh, a bit of a wall. It is the biggest wall. Now some of these other decks have outs to it. Um, the issue is that Yellow does not have a mass type of removal to hit both of them. Yeah. They kind of just have, like, Thunderbolt to deal with one and then maybe go for game afterward. But since you have two, it becomes very challenging to try to push through damage at any point in time as well as push for the board. I think here he played a Pudding. Yep. I think I would try to find either Katakuri here to try to set up for bigger swings on the next turn. Um, he's at one life. So maybe even a big mom, but Katakuri would probably be my pick here. Just to get the extra gain of life, put myself at two. These Marcos are swinging, but he has to put a lot of dawn on them in mm -hmm. order to do so. And having the Shirahoshi in life is going to make it so that you can filter those dead cards again and draw into relevant uh, counters. 2Ks, 1Ks, anything you might need. Yeah, and we were, we were talking about, um, yeah, like the 8-drops... The drops rough sometimes and we were talking to gregory uh after his match that they can be kind of clunky but here would kind of be somewhat good you could even get rid of the marco which you know like giving life to newgate's kind of weird because they're going to take it anyways so you don't mind it as much uh, or you could put your hoshi back in to get some more cycle yeah um which you is can even put this ace back to try and relieve some pressure yeah although the marcos are 5ks they probably are turning sideways next turn yeah i would not be surprised Let's see. And thinking about it. This is a tough top four, though. Yeah. It looks like he's grabbing towards Ikoku. Yeah, because that, I mean, that can get you out of one attack. I suppose it is costly. It means that you can't tap out. 
You only have six more Dawn that you can use this turn. Oh, it looks like a seven cost Big Mom. I believe oh. it was. So you could play this, leave one Dawn open, but... You're not threatening anything. You're not threatening not anything. Open. Yeah, no. And it looks like this is going to be a 9k swing at the ace. But again, you have these two Marco blockers. This is just an easy block pitch one. Yeah, and looking at that last card in life, while you still can. Yeah, there it is. I mean, Nugate only has four cards in hand, which is kind of small for this, uh, you know, this late in the game, right? Yeah. But again, this is just an easy pitch. Discard one of these nine costs, or even a Ezo. You yeah. don't need the Ezo anymore. No. And you're only losing one card here for this. Yeah. As opposed to losing two for trying to get out of a 9k swing. All right, now 7k into 7k. I think he's just attacking the market. Oh, okay, right yeah. And are you saving it? Yep. Saving the boy? Nope. Okay. I don't think he is. So now we left four open, I believe. Four. Yeah, that's a lot. So we could have double eye Goku. We could have. If that's our hand, that's pretty good. It gets us out of two attacks. It's it's good for blocking. Don't get me wrong, but like it doesn't establish board, right? I think we need to try. If I'm in William's spot, I'm thinking I'm trying to bait my opponent to swing at the blocker Marco. Because mm. as soon as he puts that shield down, there's a chance we just win the game. Yeah, I mean. What, do you think MacGyver's going to... He's got 10 down, right? You could Newgate and have one open for a Rad Beam, but I'm not sure if that does does too much. And I wonder if um, William put at the bottom of his life Ikoku's Sovereignty mm. to try and get it so that he has to discard two cards in order to gain that life again. But that one extra life matters a lot. Oh, we might find another blocker, Marco, here. And that would be, I think, the worst-case scenario. Although maybe we just went off attacks on the board. Because yeah. we have such low amount of cards in the end. Yeah, but yeah, we don't. Yeah, again, I've. It's shocking to me to see Newgate with so few cards in hand at this point. Yeah, and I think I see a guard point in one of them. So at least we have a nine. We can go up to nine. So yes. AK swings it's... not getting us there. Let's see. Yeah, it's exactly like. In Zoro, when you're playing against Newgate, you have Fire Fist to clear two Marco blockers and try to push afterward. Yeah. Yellow just doesn't have that type of tool yet. It does not. And again, like when the ten drop Big Mom, like sure you crit a life, but like when they're already at, like one life anyways, you can't like double Big Mom is not very impactful in this matchup. Yeah. Where others it would it'd be killer. Interesting. No nine drop for MacGyver at all this game. And I think I saw one there, but he got a second blocker. Yeah, that's going to be big. This is going to be tough. If we could somehow survive another hit and get to a point where we can Thunderbolt, maybe do a couple big swings with the Parasparrow and the leader, we mm -hmm. might be able to get it. Yeah, I, I definitely have done that where they're just praying against the Marco, just Thunderbolt for two. Eight Dawn underneath leader, you can swing in. It's, uh, it's, it is a route for, for victory, but it's uh, you got to get there. You put two down under there? I think so. Yeah. We are taking that last life. Yep, he's just going to play the second one. All right, zero life apiece. Two down open for... Three cards. Yeah, I don't know how we get through this. It just means like you need... I mean, if you get five attacks, you get it. <laughs> but uh, that's... Let's that's see, that's... we need six down on the Shirahoshi. Mm -hmm. That's a uh, six K swing. That's able to contest a card out of his hand. Yeah. Uh, four dawn in the pudding. That's ten. So yep, we we automatically run out of dawn there. Nice. Uh, we can go four one and then the rest on another one. No, you've got you got three swings. Three realistic. Swings, three real yeah. swings. Yeah. Just give a Machino to every color. Yeah. It's give fine. yellow a Machino. Yeah. What yeah, can go yeah. Other colors don't need generic two Ks too, right? Yeah. Only only red and I guess green. I mean, really, why why was carrot a two K and green? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Who's actually playing the five cost carrot? Yeah, yeah. Using it as a two K. This is a joke. They just happened to top. Four cards in hand. This is looking pretty tough. Okay, now quiz. Can you still get the plus one K on category when neither player has life to look at? Yes, you may. Correct. Yes. Not that I've doubted you, but that was just to confirm it. <laughs> I don't in know. In case anyone else didn't believe you. Mm. Not me. <laughs> <laughs> Not, Not me. me. <laughs> Not me. No, no, no. I'm in your corner all the time. And we see the difference between maybe a high roll yellow, like last round, yeah. and this round where he had no triggers out of life. We had Except one. that one. We had one. And that Machino is still on the board. It's it's staring <laughs> you down. And then look, his best friend Izo over there, <laughs> giving that plus 3K support. Oh, here we go here. These have to be for nine at least. Uh, That's nine. 
Yeah, yeah. They're just confirming uh, the ruling. I I knew is I knew that was one of the players was going to ask that or it, the set just came out yeah. like a week ago too. So nothing, no no shaming, but it is a it is a questionable thing. Nine at ace. I don't know if this is. Why are we playing to try and live another turn? Because like you're just going for the. Oh, game. he's going to ace. I think so. There's if, no way it, this is going face. So so here's like here's like yeah. the weird math. If you can beat it over a seven k ace, you could have beat over a six k leader, right? That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Right. So like that's that's always and it's, it sucks, but like that's always the math you have to do with Edward Newgate. It's just like, oh. If I like when they have all these six Ks out, like no matter where I put the math is always the same, so yeah. you always just go to the impactful one. All right. Well, um there we go, that's ten K swing. I'm assuming it lead. Yeah, rat beam, okay. Oh, yeah. I think it was at ace. Either way, you you were You are one hundred percent just Dead. I want to see four Ezos come down that buff up the. <laughs> yep. All right, there, first swing. Feeling Six. good. I, oh. oh no. No. Okay. Well, he, early he just concession. Yeah, early concession. Early yeah, concession. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. I thought there was no counter in hand. Like, oh, that's rough. He hit triple Otama Red Beam. That, that is a lot. It's quite a bit of counters. Well, welcome. We all saw you absolutely ran it out there with Newgate, and we saw that your build was a little bit different from the ones we've been seeing with the mono Newgate, just all of those. What was your thought of running the Luffy in there? Uh, I just want to be more aggressive, and I wanted an option to deal with things that the deck struggles with. So when I was testing Luchi, I noticed that the, the Borsalino and the Frucro were kind of a problem. So I wanted ways around that and ways around Marco and the Red Mirrors. So I decided to just put Luffy in, uh, worst case scenario. Kind of like the matchup I just had with Billy over there. Uh, you could just jet it out, eat some cards early, and best case scenario, you can surprise your opponent and steal a win. Yeah, I, I definitely saw that. And you pitched a lot of cards to save that there, pitching a lot of 1Ks, but it somehow ended up going well for you there. I mean, you had all the Marcos afterward. And have you played this matchup a lot against Katakuri at all? Do you um, know kind of what to expect from them? A little. Yeah. So I was testing the deck on Sim, and every once in a while when I was playing against the Kata deck as Whitebeard or when I was playing with Kata against Whitebeard, it felt like I was just getting out resource too quickly because if they can do kind of what Zoro's doing where they go six, 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 six a lot, you don't have a wealth of cards to really give up early while still establishing your board. So unless they just rip a ton of great triggers, there's not a lot they can do. Right. So I just wanted to apply as much pressure as possible. That's also why I was doing the mock, you know, really early with the Ezo too. Yeah. And I saw that towards the later half of the game, you were missing on Newgate. Do you run in there and just didn't see it or was it? I run it in there. I have three. Um, okay. I mean, sometimes you get it, sometimes you don't, is what it is. Yeah. I'd say that that matchup, it seems Whitebeard's very favored. Do you think that Whitebeard is a very good choice to take for, like, a regional or something like that yeah. going forward? I think it's pretty safe. Yeah. I feel like it's a very safe deck. I, in testing, haven't felt like there's anything it just auto-loses to. I think there's matchups so that it's definitely not favored. Like, I don't think Luchi's great. Yeah. Um, but that's partially what the Luffy's for, is to try and make that a little bit better. Right. So you'd say that majority of blockers are the main issue, just yeah. black blockers not having a way to push Well, through. you can't interact with the black blockers, so there's not yeah. a lot you can do. So if you start seeing people play like Black Yellow Big Bomb or just black decks in general, like Smoker was already a problem for Whitebeard, and Lucci has kind of like a Basil Hawkins type effect to make it even worse. Right. So anything you can do to make that just a little bit easier is nice. Yeah, and we saw in there you just obviously does great against Yellow. Yeah. In type of way. I would say if they do hit a lot of triggers, though, it could be an issue. But they are only 5k bodies, so they still have to put a Dawn on them and... I feel that if you're going later in the game, you're not playing any of your later game bombs. They're not as impactful as they are in other matchups. Yeah, and that's kind of the problem too is like sometimes the Katakuri deck or like even the Big Mom deck, they just have dead cards because they might be hanging on to like a 7-drop Big Mom or if they're playing Pocus, they just have cards that don't do anything or if they play the 8-drop, like are they going to really just give you another turn to set up? Right. And the answer is probably not if they can avoid it. Yeah, I would say the same thing. And then Newgate's still a very good deck, I would say. Yeah, Going yeah, forward, agree. so... Thank you very much. Yeah, absolutely. Appreciate Thanks for having watching me on. you. Best of luck Appreciate in the rest you. of your tournament. Uh, Andrew, uh, I think, was like the last person to, to sign up for this event because uh, I think he went to the store. <laughs> no, I think it was another person. Oh, was it was someone else? Okay. I saw him running in at like 55. Like, <laughs> come on. Like, please. Run. Run. <laughs> Yeah, best of three suits, eight or nine rounds. Yeah, I, I've been camp I was campaigning in DPS for a long time for it to be, uh, best of one Swiss into best of three into top cut, which eventually it did. But, um, best of three, best of three in an hour Dragon Ball. It just still means like whoever won game one probably still won the event. It's yeah. still won like worst yeah. case they tied if they won game one. 
Sometimes they do tie. But the, the amount of times like you were able to get to game three and finish it were very, very few and far between. But we're going to talk about this match. We got Jonas on Rob Lucci. We saw him last night beat, uh, you know, narrowly win against Trafalgar Law versus uh, Dofi on the right with, with Andrew. Currently, both players are 2-0. So, uh, and again, Andrew's got a bit of a, I don't know if cheese is the right, would you say cheese? Would you say cheese deck? I think it's a different take on Dofi. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We have no Peronas in the list. No Peronas. We don't need them. Nope. None. Because every single time we swing with lead, it's going to hit. Yeah. He's playing the, the oops, all warlords. So oops, all warlords that cost four or less. Build. Yeah. I will say, so I, I finally committed to it. I've, I've been talking about it for for a long time before like oh, there's just so much lore for this let's just see like the the one piece 101s about stuff and then things so i did one against the warlords and like how they work and uh i i find i like literally if you asked me 12 hours ago what what dofi's devil food power was i would i could not tell you really <laughs> really yeah wow. it's that bad like <laughs> so now i know what he does and yeah it's Dude, sick. This had nothing yeah to do with it. <laughs> uh, well they didn't okay if they drew the strings on the card they just Bare, like narrowly drew them like they but um yeah it, it totally makes sense with retrospect 100 percent. so set four you'll definitely understand set it. If four you don't actually yeah. know what his devil fruit power is yeah. you'll know like off of like four cards yeah yeah i'm i'm sure because like honestly like in this uh in the card game they he doesn't really have anything i guess string related. i mean technically if you think of his his uh leader effect it kind of like the other like he pulls him into play if you want to be like obnoxious about it you but. know i never thought about it that way until you set up i'm like oh okay exactly right like it's <laughs> <laughs> let's see he also pulls them, pulls them to play right i and don't know what they're rolling uh probably a dice i think a d20 i think it's a d20 yeah okay bunch of nerds so let's take it from who do you think wants to go first in this matchup black generically likes to go second so i'm gonna say uh and Oh yeah, it's gonna yeah. Of course, Dofi wants to go first. It's they don't even have to roll a dice. Why are they doing that? I I would probably if I sat down, I would probably say, "You want to go first? I want to go second. If I was Jonas, right? And you're like, "Yep, cool, all right." <laughs> I actually do that at locals. I'll sit there. I'm like, "Do you just want to go?" Like I say, "You could choose." Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they're like, "That's not random." I'm like, okay, who cares? Okay. <laughs> if we roll a dice, it's gonna be the same outcome. If you give me the wrong answer, uh, then there it is. Oh, okay. They set it up the proper way. Except the Don deck is in the trash, but the Don should be. Ah, it's fine. Ah, ah. Ah, it'll be fine. All right, they're good to go. For a second, I I forgot that's our job. <laughs> I almost forgot. Too, yeah, yeah. I just I. I like... felt the eyes peering into. Luckily, <laughs> like, all right, this room, which is the Talking Sticks Resort Studio podcast room here in. In Arizona, in the Legacy Sports Complex out yeah, here. I almost messed it up there, but we I, there. I I I pulled it up together. It's a very nice podcasting room. It is legitimately the nicest podcasting room I've ever been in. Like it, do a One Piece podcast. It is. I do. <laughs> I do. Like, like, hey, I'm in my 20s. I'm a millennial. I've thought about making a podcast, right? <laughs> so, like, seeing this room, I'm like, this could be it. <laughs> this is this, <laughs> this could, could be it. This is my chance. Yeah, it's finally making sense. Oh, here we go. Oh, we got a Jimbe. I'm assuming all those are on the. Okay, so yeah, yeah. Two of those should be on the leader. Oh, okay. Yeah, so uh, he didn't know that Jinbei was there. He, I must, he must have gotten lucky on that one. I don't, I don't expect him to be able I to keep this streak up. I don't think he'll ever actually know what's there. No. No, uh, there's one. You, you you still play the Dofi blocker, the three-drop one. That's a fair point. Where's this deck? Uh, <laughs> I think it's off camera. It's probably way off camera. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah, it'll be fine. Oh, it is way. It is way off camera. It is way Luckily, this isn't webcam. <laughs> <laughs> this is webcam. We have some issues. Yeah, if you're playing webcam against this deck and he keeps hitting off the top of it, it's like, whoa. We're going to get some questions. Yeah, we're going to get some questions. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's oops or warlords, 100%. Honestly, this might be a yeah, swing stuff and a lead. we we got to take this one. Yep. Then we're just going to put two down a leader, swing, pay one, and we get a Gecko Moria. Moria, to pick which up gets the, it. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> This might be the actual. Is this a. This might be relevant, actually. Yeah. I like how Jonas is separating his discard pile so we can tell what's navy and what's not. CP9, mainly. Yeah. Yeah, for the, for the record, um, this this deck is 100% only Warlords. We've checked it, and he's played against me before. I know Andrew. So, like, you literally cannot miss with this card. Like, he, your, your leader will always hit. 
it's a hundred percent warlords that cost four or less. It's true. Okay, you're right. You're which right. Matters yeah. Which matters because he matter. doesn't play nine cost Mihawk. Nope. You have no removal. You're just like mid game tempo, and you're like, oh, I hope they uh, they don't establish any footholds or have good removal. And you know what? Some decks really don't. Some decks really don't have a good answer to a lot of this pressure. Here we go. Minus two K there, followed by a Kaku. Yeah. There is, there's the string man themselves. The string man himself. You see Jonas here just using a Suru to minus the Gekko Moria to make it a three cost, and then Kaku coming into play. Easy removal that is required to discard from the hand. Yeah, Andrew also does the thing where, like, the Dawn's still rested, and you just have to move it into the, like, he puts it in the right spot, which I would probably get irritated with. You, you gotta... All right, okay, he turned it. All right, we were there. He did it? He did okay. turn it. We're at 7 Dawn here. So now we've gotten to a point where we can go 9 leader effect. Or just a 5k swing. 5k swing, make the leader bigger. This is interesting. Yeah. Seven K swing at lead. We're gonna pay the one. Yep. And get a two cost four K Jimbe. Literally the worst hit in your deck, but it's still a hit. It it's still a hit. Also, fun fact, which is very funny. Uh, the voice actor for Jimbe is literally in this building right now. He is in this building. And there's two Jimbe's right there. It looks like he's playing the four K Gekko Moria to pick up the Mihawk from the trash. Yeah. Pretty good tempo. Yeah, the only other thing also is uh, Mikox is the only 2k counter in this deck, right? I don't know. And that <laughs> scares me if that's I, true. I'm pretty sure that's true. Huh. Because I, I tried building it, and it's like, uh, no. And Jonas right now is in a position where Andrew's at 5 life. Yes. He has taken no damage, and he has a lot of cards in hand. We're pitching a 3 cost, uh, the three cost blocker. All right, yeah, attack into there, which, uh, you know, would get rid of a one cost if you do get the removal for it. Hit the brand new. Yeah. It's pretty relevant. He, it did swing. It got, it's been swinging. Oh, he pitched a 2k. Uh, yeah, the one you just added to hand, right? Yep. He's going to pitch us another 2k to save this. And that's the thing, like, you kind of don't care about going to low hand size because none of your cards actually do anything. Like, they do very little. Another oh, 2K. another 2k. That's half the 2k's in this deck. <laughs> 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 Alright, you gotta get the blue no and, and go there. So, one thing I think that's on Jonas' side is that you you get to have so many six Ks in this deck that it's a little bit harder to to trade these these fives into them. You have to invest some some time and effort into it. Mainly just Don. Sure. The most part. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> mostly Don. Mostly Don. It looks like his drop is a Kumadori and a Khalifa. So if he blocks this blue node and gets KO'd, he can bring back a Kumadoria for another six K body. Yeah. It's a lot of pressure. Um, six K going into a six K is very good. Yeah. Brings the Khalifa though, he can kind of fix some problems with his hand if he has a lot of bricks or something like that. It's pretty interesting here to see. Yeah, if you're not used to this deck in the temp, like, I would say that Andrew's got an okay tempo. I've seen it go off a little bit. Where Gecko, Gecko, and like 2k counters are some of the better cards in the deck, so he did get the good ones. Uh, but he's yet to see the vanilla Gecko, because that's also a very strong target. How do you feel about 7k's at face? Uh, at least one's gonna hit, I think. Maybe two. Maybe two. I mean, you're you're gonna probably block one of them, right? Right. Yeah, and and the other thing for this matchup too, like we haven't seen it from Jonas, but Borsalino does a lot of work. Because again, like getting to six K is actually non-trivial. I mean, Jonas is only at two cards, in, three cards in hand, so these attacks probably can connect. Yeah. Uh, I do think he's swinging at the Kumadori. Okay, yeah, yeah, which I don't know if that's right. With a Bluno out, it surely it can be. Because he also has another one in drop, so if you KO it, it doesn't really matter because he has another target to get. Yeah. 
Um, I do think you have to relieve some of this board pressure, though. This is Agreed. quite a bit he's exerting, so I think we do need to deal with it. I wouldn't mind, like, an 8k swing with leader here first. Yeah. And then, like, maybe pay the 1, see what we get. Maybe get a 4 cost get Gomoria. Yeah, and there, there are some times where there's, like, some weird math involved with Ooh. just uh, going from there. Okay, so this is a 6k with Jinbei. Uh, yeah, probably at the Kaku with the Kumidori. Looks like Jonas does have a 2k in hand and something else. Well, the issue is if you go to no cards in hand here. Yep, he's just going to block. And then, uh, yeah, bring the Kumidori back. That is a lot of pressure on the board. Yeah. Three 6k bodies is quite a bit. And here we go. Swinging seven at, I would assume, a Kumidori. Or a lead. Go lead. <laughs> See what happens here. It looks like we have three Don left after this. All yeah. right, uh, Bors uh, is um, getting the Pacifista. The Kuma. Kuma, sorry. The Kuma blocker, yeah. Yeah. Plays the Pacifista. And he does not have Pacifista in his deck. He does not, no, because that is not a seven Warlords. Oh, <laughs> a not. third Gecko, though, to get another 2k in hand? Wow. That's pretty busted. He only runs four, yeah. but he's going to play them more than four times. Yeah. He's going to count uh, them more than four times. Fun thing about this deck is, like, you do not care about... Uh, Leaving Dawn up at the end of the turn because there's literally there's nothing. No can, there's, there's no events. There's no events. You have nothing. nothing to play. Yeah. Let me bluff you with my 50 card Warlord pile. <laughs> All right. So starting off with 5k at Gecko. Again, prioritizing that brand new. If you are able to pop something, you do get that pressure. Is it the four cost double attack Gecko he just pitched? I think so. Which you have to have five or more cards in hand for that one. So it's uh, a little bit uh, rare for you to get there. But I think I've seen that gecko get pulled from my pack, and then it went straight into my box. <laughs> I did not care to look at the card. Yeah, yeah. I, I thought about it for a bit, because double attack's so weird in this game. It does. It can catch you up and can make some states to where you can't win into winnable states, especially since there's now a card that you can trigger out of life that has double attack for yellow. But... Uh, Edward we Weevil yes. in the pitch. I do remember it actually was played in some decks in the beginning because it was a three k, it was a three cost five k body, mm -hmm. which isn't bad. No, five k's are pretty good when your leaders are five k. Yes, but I've uh, yeah, I agree that there's there's just some times where he's uh, it is interesting. We'll have to see here because most of the board lives. This is very scary for Jonas. It is, yeah. His last swing is a Kaku. Oh. All right, cause, we cause, pitched two cards. Yeah. Okay. I think it was an 8K swing at something. Oh, oh not no. The not the 5K. Not the no. Suru. No. All right, oh. the Jinbei. Yeah. And that's, Jinbei, get rid of that Suru. Yeah, no. Nah, nah, or the Brandon. Brandon. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. We have two attacks next turn. Do we have surprise? The the secret seven warlord. Usopp. Yeah. In our Usopp, deck. yeah. <laughs> Secret tech. He doesn't know. <laughs> on, a, on the flip side, Dofi has five cards in life, right? Oh, yeah, that's five brand Five, yeah, five, yeah. So if I'm Andrew, I'm thinking I could probably clear two of these Kumadoris. I can maybe play something depending on what I draw. And then I'm still in a pretty good spot for the most part, right? Yeah. I mean, Jonas only has two cards in hand. And that's the thing. Like, they're, this board is very removable. You can, you know trade two and then you'll you're gonna end the turn with three cards on board with the with the dofi assuming you hit <laughs> <laughs> what is this assuming to hit yeah business? yeah yeah you know who's this what's this bug they snuck, stuck into my deck before the duel whoa cold up wait what what this isn't a seven warlord <laughs> six warlords <laughs> you got six cut warlords. bub come on man bad time You know, I never ever counted, but there are more than seven warlords because it's a rotating position. Like at, the the lore is that there's seven at one time, but now I, I always like, oh, there's only seven guys in there. There's oh. more than seven. There's always seven. There's always seven, there's but just former seven warlords. Yes, so there's sure. Former warlords. In yeah. The and then seven. Sure, warlords. sure. But the card game's nebulous, so like it depends on when the art is. If they're currently a seven warlords or not, right? I feel like right now on the show. Because Jimbei is not one right now, right? You have to say no because it's the truth. I'm thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, I don't think 2K. Yeah, I know. I know. He tried to become... Like, he left it for a bit, and then he tried to come they back. They threw him in prison. Yeah, exactly. 
they had the a whole deal with being a seven uh, warlord was you don't go to prison. Yeah, he, he got. Yeah, he was on suspension for a little bit, and uh, let's say it's, yeah, it's crazy. It's it's I again I I decided you know oh, what, I he should... flipped over a gecko more yet. And oh. Boa Hancock. See, this is the position I like. We killed two things. We got yeah. rid of two things on the board. Yeah. And now we we aren't dead. We have five life. What's yeah. he gonna do? Play three blockers? He has two cards in hand. Here's the thing, and you are drawing every turn as Dofi still. Like you are well, still drawing, which you are not on the other way. And this Boa draws discards on swing. Let's see. Oh, I'm, we're getting we're getting school uh, mild spoilers. I suppose. Oh yeah, they yeah. Well, technically they did disband in them. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's not really like a manga thing. It's more of a. Uh, they removed it from the system. Yeah, the it's video the thing. video I saw said that they were at five for a long time because they're supposed to have seven. It, it, like, the, the start of the video was like, they have to have seven at all times. And the end of the video is like, there's only five right now. We don't know what's going to happen. So, but... Jonas does have to end this game. You do have to win. Timelines <laughs> in this game are kind of weird. Yeah. Like and most things in this universe. There's probably no triggers in this deck. Yes. Oh, wait. There are some seven warlords that have trigger. There are, but I don't... There's there, a Kuma. There's a Kuma. The That's true. The top three. I don't think they're playing. I, you know what? I could be wrong. We pull up the list. <laughs> no. Uh, yeah. It just. I mean, not not like this. This is not an insult, but it is. It is just like, oh, has the card? Put it in. Like, has the trait? Put it in. Like starter boa. Let's see. Uh, yeah, starter boa. It's it can play off of life and be a blocker. Oh, he did play a blocker. No, that's that's the five cost or four cost from, uh, set two. It's the one that's well, in, no, in pull that down. Oh, you always played the blocker. Oh, blocker. Yeah. yeah, sure did. You played Fukuro. All right, let's see what we're gonna do here. We have four cards in hand. Now we actually do need to worry about. Losing the game. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Again, I like to be known. Jonas has uh, put five dawn on the Subaru again. Mm -hmm. Throwing yeah, up as a it, it is. It has attacked and KO'd two things. Twice. Twice. Discarded Kumadori. So now Jonas has no cards in the hand. Has a blocker. Probably gonna eat the blocker here, right? Mm-hmm. What's that? Oh, it, oh, that's the blocker crocodile. Sometimes blocker croc. No, it has it has blocker if he has a dawn on him. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes. Oh, <laughs> the gecko. Oh, yeah. yeah he's reading it too. Interesting. He's like, oh, there's another one. He blocked. But you have to have five or more cards in hand, and uh, I don't think that's ever going to happen again. Oh, we have Blocker Boa down. That card's good. That card also says draw a card. I think it's the only SR in his deck. I think it is. Huh. <laughs> I think I think four bows are probably more expensive than the rest of the deck combined with normal art leaders. Well, he has Jimbe's in there. Let's not. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Never mind. Never mind. I'm wrong. I'm super wrong. <laughs> He's super wrong. Can we take that again? Can we start from the top? Nope. Ah, clip it, Chad. There are eight good cards in his deck. <laughs> that's twice as many as I thought. Ooh, that's a Kuzan. Draw us a card. All right, we have two cards in hand. If we could save some things on the board, we could get a chance. Ooh, no. Again, like this, this is such a weird matchup where, like, you, Andrew, will always just get the counter off. Yeah, I, I additionally do not like the, the Dawn management, but at the same time, like it does not matter if he's Dawn up at the end of the turn. Like, there's literally nothing to spend on. He has one Dawn open. Desert Spada is a seven Warlords of the Sea card. Yes, but you can't... Pl like, <laughs> I play my Desert Spada face down in attack position. Ooh. Like, <laughs> Imagine if the leader just said, just play the top card of your deck if it's a seven Warlords. Get, play Desert Spada, give your leader plus 2k. Mm -hmm. just, Offensive countering. It just says indefinitely. It's like <laughs> 7k leader always? Okay. Oh. They're thinking. That card draw is real tempting. I think we let it go. We? <laughs> Are we playing this one? I'm rooting for Andrew this one. <laughs> I love Jonas, but still... <laughs> <laughs> I'm rooting for the for the Subaru to get one more one more smack across the face. Just. One more smack? Yeah. The Subaru connects, I'm very sad. <laughs> <laughs> 
And you know what's crazy is if he does discard these two cards, the Suru might actually connect. Yeah. Oh, no, he's got four Dawn. Yeah, no, the Suru's not connecting this turn. It will try. No more disrespectful Suru smacks. Oh, he's thinking about blocking. Because you want to be able to block and then draw and then <laughs> keep it around. The to... Dawn. <laughs> oh. Oh, did he pitch his entire hand to that? Seems like it. Yeah. That was just... Yeah, okay. Okay. You removed it. All right. Spandum. Yeah. Oh, no. The Spandum beats. Yeah. Cards have gone Dawn that have never gone Dawn before. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Spandum usually gets Dawn. It's only a Yeah, yeah that's but fair. But Shiro getting Dawn yeah. is kind of... <laughs> Man, have you ever won with Shiro Hoshi? Let me tell you. It is, <laughs> it is its own special feeling. I think more players have won with Otama than anything else. Then, yeah, then, then they do imagine, right? Yeah, I feel like every single person who's played Red goes, Oh, yeah, I just played Otama, played three Machinos, buffed it up, and swung. Now, what you don't do is you don't put seven down on the Machino and swing. Mm -hmm. that, that that, is a that's a bad time. That's a bad time, for sure. Time. That is rough, rough stuff. All right, so Andrews thinks he's got one card in hand. He'll be able to get one more card draw from uh, this Dofi. Oh, locked out again. Third one of those Gekomorias that he's never seen before in his life. And let's see. So we, we have a blocker with the Crocodile. Let's see. This is a promo card from... Do you remember those those One Piece packs? Yeah, it was like the promo zero packs. The ones you got at like... Uh, Anime Expo and stuff. Anime Expo. And then it was... Um, I think it was like a store demo too. It is... Was like the first one. None of those cards are viable. None. Well, well, well. The Luffy was very good when it was around. You know what? Actually, okay, hold up. That Luffy was very good. Hold up. Yeah, the Luffy was good. Um, there's a red event card. Uh, that it came with. Is it? Oh, yeah. It's like, um, put your entire hand in your deck, draw that many cards. Are we crazy enough to run those again? It's a minus one. Yeah, but I smell adventure ahead. It's not good enough. We're playing in buggy? If we, we played a combo deck, maybe. Maybe. I th I'm going to put it in my buggy list. One more card. Why not? Put in ace? Worst case, you just discard it. Easy. I don't think. No, easy. <laughs> it's going to be viable. 100%. I don't know about that one. <laughs> this is deviating. No, he's got this. <laughs> I think Andrew can do this. Here, here's the, here's the, the thing with double it. Rush Usopp, the double yeah. rush Usopp tech would go crazy. That here. you've been dodging this entire match. That you just somehow you stacked your deck in a way that you just don't draw them. Yeah, I the when I played against him earlier too, like he does go for like the board trades a lot with, of the time. But sometimes I think you just go face, and like they, they ha them having to swing into your stuff puts them so much behind on tempo that you just win by attacking. Yeah, Yana's probably just double swings for game next. Time. Yeah, oh but yeah, that's for not sure. Fun. Yeah, whoa, hold up. Yeah. Yeah, we're we're here to try to win. Oh, oh he's trying to get rid of the Suru. Is he trying to talk no jutsu Yonas into letting? Him Destroy the <laughs> I think so, yeah, like Hey man, man, you should let me get rid of that Suru. Talk no jutsu does work. It's so funny. <laughs> like <laughs> here's the play. Like I, I usually don't I don't usually talk to my opponents that like I, I talk to them but like not like mess around in high stakes stuff, but there are a hundred percent people who do. They're just like it's as if you're playing in your mom's basement. Like hey, that's what I do. Yeah, a hundred percent. They're just like do you want to do this play? <laughs> like, 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 oh, and now you play your nine cost new gate and go to seven k. And then you're like, and then they sit there and they go, wait. They know that I was going to do that play. Do they do that? Like, like, their eyes widen just a little they bit. They go, is that bad? Yes, yeah, like, <laughs> is that like what they wanted? Like that's, and they they spend another like it, in the end it usually hurts you because it just gets you closer to time. But like, <laughs> sometimes it actually costs you a game. <laughs> yeah, it does, right? <laughs> Happened to me at Nats DBS. <laughs> You just tell them what to do. They're like, oh, I could do that. Like, no, wait. I was like, no. Mind games. Don't do that. No, no. I was just kidding. 
It was just a joke. I'm joking. I'm joking. It's a tough turn. All right. We're going to flip the Gecko Mori at the top to pick up the Boa. Yeah. We're going to play Boa again. There are worse cards. I think that's actually the best play that most Ophi decks do. We have three uh, Geckos that we've hit so far, though, right? Oh. 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 That's fine. All right, Jinbei again. Coming back. All right. Uh, Shockwave. Shockwave, just to get out. No no popping on the board. I don't know why. Yeah, just to, just to get out. You have the down open this turn. Yeah. One you... cost law blocker? I guess just have more of the seed that does flip off. It does. Map. You could. It feels no, real bad. It's that it's... But it, it's it's not as bad as like just playing one dawn for nothing. Sometimes I suppose. Sometimes they don't swing at it. Who's gonna swing at it? You just it's it's just preemptively blocking, right? Yeah, just... it's just a blocker preemptively. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. It's easy. As long as it they don't have any one, uh, one drops out. Other. Uh oh. I was, was giving a blocker. blocker. If only they had a blue card with double attack. That's <laughs> not Gekko Moria. That's not Gekko Moria. That's not that card. That doesn't uh, depend on hand advantage. So now, actually, the four cost cannot pick up five things from the drop. Yes. Cannot pick up the 6k Gekko Moria or the double attack Gekko Moria. Mm -hmm. Or the original four cost 5k Gekko Moria in the starter deck. Yeah. I said Gekko Moria like four times. You though. did. You did. I was I was counting. That's not an easy word to say. There are, there are a couple of uh, tongue twisters, including, ironically, Pero Sparrow. You left two down open. Oh, man. Why is it tapped? I guess we're just... I think he attacked with the... I guess he, he did. attacked with it, yeah. And now we lose. And he took the Dawn back after it. You know, he doesn't matter because it don't have blocker no more. No, don't discard it. No. Uh, you know, I don't, like, dislike... Uh, He's going to win with Suru. Suru? He's Suru. going to do it. He's going to just do it. Come on. Put all the Come on, come on. No, 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 respect. Oh, we hate to see it. That's too bad. He had seven on two. He could have done yeah, it. Yeah, he could have done it. That's too bad. How many people can say they won a game with Subaru swing for seven? Hello. Hello. How, How are you, you doing, Jonas? Doing? Great. That game was hilarious. Yeah, it was, have you have you played against that deck before? That was my first time playing it in OPO three, and it was a very weird game to play for sure. Yeah, yeah. Did you did he flip like the like do the blind flip? And you're like, wait a minute. Yeah. <laughs> um, I've seen him in locals a bunch, and I know his decks configured to just have a bunch, bunch of yeah. just blind hits off of. Um, yeah. Um, exactly words. fifty, actually. <laughs> the, the dream. I was scared of a random level of that yeah, turn. Otherwise, yeah. I would have done the Suru attack for for lethal, which would have been fun. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> if you don't know like the actual list, like there are some like oh he could be running or in that kind of stuff. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's something that if you're not able to like you, you're lucky enough that your deck has a lot of six Ks. Yep. Which means it's easier to trade in without them, you know, trading back. So yep, exactly. Um, but yeah, obviously uh, you're nine zero in the last twelve hours in this card it game, right? It is exciting, exciting to actually be lucky today with this deck. Yeah, um, playing against a wide variety of decks. Um, people have been telling me that the yellow matchups, the Katakuri specifically matchups, pretty bad. Um, I've only played against it once in locals, and I got really lucky. Mm -hmm. um, but to find out, probably gonna play at least once more in this tournament. So hopefully, I'll do well there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we have a couple more. Uh, we I think we have either five or six undefeated after this round. So huh? you're one of them, um, and uh, so five, five or four on top of that. A lot of red, obviously, not mm -hmm. not too surprising. And uh, you you think uh, Lucci's comfortable in that matchup though? The red matchup. Yeah, red matchup. Yeah, I yeah. uh, played against Ace and Whitebeard so far, and despite my draws being subpar, the matchups were not close. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ace specifically, since you just have like your your Borsalino that and uh, Borsalino's a nightmare for it's, them. <laughs> they're just like they stare at like my Flame Emperor does nothing. Like, what? Is, why do I run this card? <laughs> I went just on my four dawn turn. I played Borsalino, and he was just like time walked basically. Hand in hand already. Games. Like just oh man. So well, cool. Well, you're definitely. Very strong player, especially with uh, you know Smoker in last set and end with Rob Lucci, and uh, it's it's really cool to see you play and you just, you're very automatic with a lot of that stuff. Yeah, so. um, I've played black for so long. Yeah. it's gonna be natural, and hopefully I'll get there a little bit longer. Um, one of my close friends, Clay Hill, is also playing Lucci today. Yes, and I've, hopefully he's also undefeated. And uh, we'll see him in the future next uh, we can we can know. Do you want to know? I think I think oh, he lost. No. Let's see. I think he he lost in table one. I think. They already paired round four. Oh, you got to get out of here. Oh, all right. 
I'm at table two. All right, appreciate table it. Table two. Well, there it is. All righty. Well, thank, thank you very you much. Um, good luck in the future rounds. Yep. And I think if you win like one more, you're in top also, eight. Clay so. did win. Clay did win. Oh no, this 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 is previous round. He lost. Oh, yeah, yeah, he lost against Avi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We cannot. When the matches come up, we just have to show them sometimes. For sure. And uh, for people who are curious for the other one, so table one is MacGyver versus Gage, and Gage is playing... I believe he's also playing Zoro. I think he's also playing Zoro. So Zoro versus Whitebeard on table one. Yep. And then on table two, it is Jonas, who's still rocking the Rob Lucci, versus Jim. Who's on Law. Yeah, Jim, uh, who we think is on Law. Fairly certain he's on Law. Fairly certain. So, yeah, that is correct. So, no yellow undefeated, but there could be some shots into the top eight. Uh, we have an ace player who's currently 2-1 because we're in a round. We're going to round four, so that's possible there, too. And yeah. that is it. So, we're going to go into this matchup. I think this is, I would say, one of the statistically likeliest matchups to be occurring. Yeah, I think if you go to any big tournament, you will run into this at least once, yeah. either spectating or playing, either one. Yeah, It happens every time. Happens every time, and so who, uh, who wants to go first? Um, I think Zoro still. Zoro still. You want to apply a lot of pressure. The main thing is you want to limit the amount of cards in Whitebeard's hand early. Yeah. Which means you want to start swinging sixes of them as much as possible, getting the hand size lower and lower each time. That way, later in the game, you're able to just swing a couple of bigger hits, eights, and they will connect. So definitely want Zoro going first, and that's kind of fine because Newgate wants to go second. Mm -hmm. So really the role doesn't matter here. You could try going second with, um, ooh. Oh, he's trying to hide behind this. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what he's trying to do there. Mm. So uh, you might see uh, Zoro probably taking second here too, just to try and take that first official damage against Whitebeard, having them do it. Their curve is also thrown off a little bit. Yeah, it looks like Shane is... I didn't even see him look at his hand. Did you see him look at his hand? He looked at some cards. Okay, okay. Yeah, it looked like... For me, it was very quick. He's like, oh, snap take then. Because it did not... He's forgetting they're gone. Here we go. There it is. All right. And it looks like Shane is going first. He's going to round the Whitebeard Pirates top five for a Whitebeard Pirate type character. Character like only. Character only. Very important to differentiate. You cannot get events off this. Uh, very good. You can get either something you're missing from your curve. So either probably a King Do, an Ace, or a New Gate. Mm -hmm. uh, Atmos, also very good. Thatch, whatever you might be looking for. Or a Marco. Marco, very good card too, the five cost one. Yeah, and and additionally, one of the best things about that card is that it is a lot of a lot of the Whitebeard Pirate cards, uh, event cards, are kind of leader locked to, to a Whitebeard Pirate, which there's not a lot of leader locking in this game, but being able to have just a generic card that you can pitch for either Marcos or uh, even just help you find your pieces you are needing is, is pretty strong. You see Avi here playing a Dedan, looking at five, probably grabbing the Machino. That's what he grabbed. Mm -hmm. uh, Machino is a really good hit to get off of this, just because it makes all your one cost actual viable swings against this deck. Yeah. And the earlier you swing, the better for you. Because mm -hmm. if you, yeah, you want to try to do some chip damage early while well, they kind of are still setting up a little bit for Newgate. Yep. And this is just gonna be a nine K swing at lead. Typically, Newgate doesn't have any three cost plays to play anymore. Last format, some decks played Vista in it, and mm -hmm. Vista was an easy way to pop. Like the sedan here and set up a 3k body. Uh, you don't really need to do that anymore. And here we go. Just a rush Zoro coming down. Trying to make that 5 cost play really awkward mm -hmm. for Shang. He's going to have to play the 5 cost Marco and just KO the Dedan. Or attach Dawn and somehow find a way to clear this um, the Zoro that just came down. And he countered with a Mass Deuce, which I don't see I don't see Mass Deuce as often being played more. It's, I think it's still very viable, but... Uh... Definitely a, a choice to include that card. Interesting pitch of Avi here. He pitched that Machino you know, that he had it earlier. I think if you don't have, um, I think if you don't have any of the one drops on the board, it's a fine pitch to do. Yeah. But I still like holding on to them because you can surprisingly make Izo a giant body, mm -hmm. unlike a last case swing if you have like two or maybe even three of them. Yeah. Not saying he's gonna play three of them against him. Who would do that? Oh me. <laughs> <laughs> you looking at me? Oh, crazy! No way. Play there. I guess Three. that's Marco. Uh, he, and you see here, Avi just playing the Marco out. Just have the body on the board. As soon as he gets that down, it's going to turn to a battle of swing sixes at lead, swing sevens now. And really, that Marco is just going to sit there and never leave the board. Just yeah. pitch events to keep up with it. Yeah, and you, you really, like, normally Newgate doesn't have a really good card to even... Uh, there's that 
get pops by Marco, if that makes sense. So unless yeah. they invest like a Toma into it. So just having a 6k on board that you can start attacking with is, is good enough. So you see here, Ace coming down for the Whitebeard player, clearing that Zoro, the minus 3k being very relevant, and also just allowing for those swings to go. That's why going wide and turning it sideways can also be bad. 7 cost Ace kind of just comes in and clears it out. Yeah, and so even just having a 7k body too just means it's, it's kind of hard to get rid of this guy because you're already just having to do so many 6k swings that it's usually not really worth it. But, you know, you are able to kind of pressure these exactly with one Dawn. 6k with Zoro, 7k with Marco. Yeah, effectively, this is how I would see this going. Just pitching here to save the uh, Marco. Mm -hmm. You want to try and get as many cards out of the um, Whitebeard player's hand as possible, getting them lower and lower. And you see Shang has is pitching two Ks here, yeah. and he only has four cards in hand. This is going to allow for some of those later swings to just push through. And also, if Avi can try to establish a four-cost Marco here, it's going to prove to be very good for him, just because it's never going to leave the board. It's going to block some of these bigger swings, and it's just going to keep pushing through overall. Yeah, so Buggy came down. It did find a Radical Beam, and then for five, we're playing... Or sorry, for four, a Teach. Teach is also a very good card against Whitebeard. If Shane does not hit a 9 cost this turn, it can prove that, that Teach is going to swing for massive amounts of damage on the next turn. Yeah, it's it's very scary. And like the other thing is that um, well, there's just so much cards in Avi's hand right now. You're already down to 2 life as, as Newgate, so uh, yeah, you, you kind of have to play a 9 drop. And, and if you play a 9 drop, you can't swing with your Marco because they're just going to swing yep. to the Marco. I would even say you can't swing with Ace either. Either card, it feels the same way, mm -hmm. but I think swinging the Marco here would be a big misplay for the most part, just because as soon as you swing it, they know that I could just swing it to Marco over and over again. You're going to give me cards regardless, even if it's events overall, Yeah. and that's eventually how you're going to lose a lot of your hand size and have no cards in hand to try and survive hits that go on you later. So we'll have to see here what Shane does. Yeah, if he does swings here, then it's... Okay, so he's probably if he's playing the nine cost, it's gonna be, I don't think in his favor. All right, just a two K to get out of the. Uh, Pitched another mock, you know. All right, that's probably gonna radical beam or guard point. Yeah, yeah, sure yep, it is. Guard point. And all right, there is a it new is gate. new gate. Okay, I do not like it like this. Flipped it over the eight. Yeah, I do side. see. I do see the eight K. <laughs> yeah, yeah, very fun. And another rad beam coming out of Bobby's hand. So now we're just gonna get to a point where Shang has four cards in hand, and he's gonna lose most of his board this turn. He is. And I don't know how you're going to win with just a Newgate swing plus leader. Let me get the... Yeah, there it is. Boom. A Gordon here. Oh, man. If that's Gordon on the ace, that's very good. For um, It's very good for Avi if he Gordons the ace here. Just yeah. because it's going to make out 4k. We could trade with it a lot easier. And eventually we could just start clearing the board. Wait for him not to have Newgate the next turn. Mm -hmm. Swing it face. Probably win the game. So, And yep, just a 4k into Ace. And Ace is going to get KO'd. Alright, 7k probably into the other Marco, yeah? Yep, we have to clear that Marco somehow. And this is definitely the turn to do it. Yeah, only four cards in hand. That's very rough. And this match is only on on for seven minutes. That can't be right. It feels like it's been like ten at least. Um, it does feel that way sometimes. But red, it gets very challenging. Mm -hmm. And here you see Shane probably doing a more disciplined type of play here, just leaving the Marco, letting it go, and just not losing a lot of our hand size. Yeah. And then we're going to see some big swings from over here. It's just some eights trying to get as many cards out as possible. Yeah, there's 2k. Ooh, discarding an Otama. And now you can swing a Teach if you really want to. And I think I'd actually favor it here. Yeah, I think that's fine, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, for, for people out of the know, Shane is a... Uh, uh, what's the right word? A... He he makes a lot of custom art. A lot oh of yeah. Custom art. I I if you don't know, you're not part of the the Arizona community if you don't have at least one card that he's made and, and given to you. Like yeah. He's got he goes through like a pack of colored pencils like once a week. Like it's crazy. He makes so much art. We go eight at lead here with the new gate. It's at least another card out. I'm sorry with the teach at yes. new gate. 
There's definitely that temptation to take this right now, isn't there? If you have another 9 cost, I think it's fine. Yeah, and uh, going down to 1, no trigger. Uh, here we go. Probably a 4 cost Marco coming down here for Avi. Yep. Yeah. And that blocker, you're going to again prove a challenge. We pitched an Otama earlier. That Otama could have possibly went towards clearing it and going for game. Yeah. Especially yeah, with the new gate on the board, being able to get the, you know, reduce its cost there and then oh, get the auto clear. Marco. Yeah. Which, uh, you know, it's a good target to pitch with Marco. Marco. Another Marco. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. That the five cost is just so good. I don't know what they were thinking for it. Like three K, like the difference between a, like popping a two K and a three K is like astronomical. There's just so many cards that are simply three Ks that people play that it just gets so much good removal. Yeah. I think the combination of minus effects in this game with that card is very good. Mm hmm And just using like an automata clear like a five K dude with the Marco is very good. Yeah. Even Gordon now has merit, just playing it super early. Yeah, I've I've been always like if you compare the removal power of red versus the removal power for black, like uh, technically black can uh, like pop bigger things a little bit easier, but you, it's almost always like a, a two for one trade, right? Yeah. I think Shane is debating right now playing another nine cost or swinging with this new gate and popping like an Ezo or something. Yeah. And I think he's going to play another 9 cost. With this swing here, most definitely leads to probably tap 9, play another new gate. Yeah. And Avi recognizes that, bringing it back, discarding a Fire Fist. Yeah, that, that card's, I think, very good in a lot of matches. But this one, this one you're okay with losing it. It actually can be pretty good for the most part. I don't mind. If he plays more than one, it's very good. Yeah. Um, if he picks just one, I feel like we could have pitched a different card. Because if Shang sets up two blockers here and passes, we do have the attacks on board, but it becomes a lot difficult. As opposed to, like, if we have Otama plus Fire Fist, we clear both blockers and then go for game. Yeah, and I, I think, like, uh, Fire Fist is definitely the card that equalizes a lot of, like, Trafalgar Law matchups. Right? And I think that's the, the main reason you tech this card in is just, you know what? Two for two when they're trying to establish a wide board, easy. Easy trade for that one. I think, like, out of this set, that's probably my favorite red card out of all of them. Ooh, they are playing yep. the second one. Second new gate's very good. It's probably an eight at the teach. And we have a the red, red beam. beam. Man, wherever it is, did not hit. And we're trying to set up for game, probably. I mean, we're not going to be able to get rid of this new gate. And we do have a lot of big bodies on the board. And he still kept that second mark on hand, which is very, very relevant information. <laughs> For the most part. Yeah, so it just, it's like a weird question of where to swing, right? right Absolutely. Zoro effect, 1k everything. So this is our first 8k swing. All right, uh, Gets mass, mass deuce. deuce. Yep. Yeah. So this is going to be a Machino. Yep, Machino buff. Give it to Don. We have to be careful. We don't want to run out of Don for a second, Marco. It's eight at lead. Yep, it's eight. Machina gives it plus three, the Zoro plus four, two Don plus six, eight. Yeah, and here's the thing, like, if you, yeah, you, you need to establish two blockers for Avi because that, that Marco is not very, it's is pretty shaky against this board. If they have another Otama in hand for Shane, uh, you know, just play Otama, new gate effect, attack, get rid of the Marco, and that's a 13k swing, or sorry, a, uh, not 13, 12k swing, that's pretty tough to get out of. Yeah. I think here Shane is debating either taking this life or pitching another card. I feel like if he pitches, we're in a pretty bad spot. But we, well, I'm sorry, if he takes it, we're in a bad spot. Mm -hmm. If he pitches, he needs to. So I'm just thinking about what he can do to get out of this. Because that teach is going to swing for base 8. And just each dawn you put on it is more and more power. Yeah. Yeah, because you, you can use, uh, you can attack with it and get rid of the, uh, the ISO right now. Yeah. Yeah, that. In general, I think the teach is a good card, uh, but I know some people are just swear against it. They're just like, no, it's too bricky, or it's not worth the uh, having a card with no counter in hand. It always feels that way, and I was not a fan of it either. But after playing with it, you just sometimes need it. Mm-hmm. And you have just a second one there, and 
You see it churning through the deck. It's drawing you a card. It's allowing you to swing eight at most times. And if the white beer was just a 6k leader, that swing goes through 100%. Oh, yeah. And I think, what, three cards in obvious hand? Two life. He has two blockers. Shane has, I think, three cards in hand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, three, no life left. And even if you owe Tama to get rid of one of the Marcos, yeah, great. He, he pitched a Jozu earlier, which could have been rushed for game technically uh, if needed. Not, not likely, but could have been. Yeah. One thing for certain is Whitebeard is definitely a deck where you have to... The value of cards increases as the game goes on. Four cost Marco has a very high value, I think, mm -hmm. going through the game. Yeah. Just because later in the game that card never leaves. Sure. And so I, I wonder if what's what's the the play here. So, I mean, you could put two under underneath your new gate, get rid of. Uh, ooh, is that Ace? That is Ace. Okay, so that could be troublesome. Yeah, because then that means that one of these new gates can connect. But I think he's just playing it to, yeah. Try to get some removal. Yeah. Okay, Avi here is pitching to save the blocker. Does attack for six next turn, so very relevant. <laughs> I'm confused. Why is it? Yeah. Uh. Oh, because he he popped the Marco with the effect of the new gate. Okay. And then he saved it. So he's still going into face. It's a very close game. Yeah. I mean, it, you could have the 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 soul read that Avi has dead cards in hand, but if he has a guard point, it's very good for him. Yeah. And yep. yeah, uh, you oh, rad beam. you've lost. Now Shane has not got it. No, that you can, even if the blocker on board, like, or sorry, even with the blocker on board, um, what you have two attacks and you need to get essentially three hits in. It's two hits. He's at one. Yeah. But yeah, two hits. Sorry, yeah. three hits with the blocker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He ran out of attacks yes. essentially. Yeah. It's all four rad beams for Avi. Yeah, and at this point, like you just clear board, and even then, like it's just this game. That's fine if he clears the board. I mean, we have a teach, we have everything else. You have yeah. cards in hand, so. Yeah. All right. Gets the block. No save. One dawn open three in hand. You just need one attack to go in. So what, best case, 4k, 2k, 2k, so 8 plus 6, 14. Just put one underneath Zoro, everything underneath your 5 cost Marco, and that should be it. Or we can swing minimums and then swing big with Teach. Okay, Mr. Value over there. I love Value. <laughs> value Gamer. The king of Value. Actually, no, I play Zoro, so there's no Value there. 6 at lead. Gonna get a four cost mark out of hand. Hmm. Uh, eight at lead now. I'm gonna eat a guard point. Six at lead. Do you have a 2k? Nope. That is it. That is it. Avi taking here with Zoro. And I think Zoro actually is really favored in this matchup. Yeah. The amount of swings you do just contest the white beard hand so much. Mm -hmm. And now that you have like a mid game play. To contest the early game plays for some of the Whitebeard decks, it's actually really good. So. Yeah, I agree. Hello. Welcome. Congrats on your win that we just saw in there. Thank you, thank you. And have you played this matchup a lot? Seems like you knew what you were doing for the most I part. I played it a couple times. Yeah, okay. just, Shane's always been playing Whitebeard, so every once in a while I run into him. Yeah. There's a couple other people at Locals, too. Awesome. <laughs> Why did you choose Zoro for today? Why do you think you did that? I honestly still think it's best deck. It, like, it... Was I, I argue that it was best deck last set, and we just got better cards to make it probably as strong or even stronger than what it was before. Yeah, I would agree with you. I think Zoro is very well positioned in the meta right now, as well as moving forward. And I also think that that matchup was very favored for you, and you obviously knew what you were doing for the most part. Was there any points in that match where you were kind of nervous about anything? Anything uh, where you're like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> real, realistically, that last turn where he had the one down open and he aced both of my... Uh, blockers i asked them how much don the sea quake cost and he said one so i was like with what i had in my hand if he had the sea quake and then swung um swung big with white beard and then seven with the lead unless i didn't get a counter i would have lost but yeah 
Yeah. I mean, if they were attacking Seaquake, that would be a pretty mm -hmm. bad time overall. But no, but, I, I think once uh, once I got Teach on board and just established him, it almost makes a lot of things easier. Yeah, you made yeah. Teach look very good that match. <laughs> mm -hmm. I know that some people are kind of 50-50 on it, but you made it securely and made it say, yep, this card's insane against Whitebeard. Yep, and that's, way. that's the only reason why I play it is probably for Whitebeard. Yeah. If it wasn't for that, we wouldn't be in the deck. Well, moving forward, you're going to improve to Undefeated. Still, yep. we have, I think, two more rounds left. Mm -hmm. So... We hope to see you in here later for top eight. Congratulations sure. thank again, you, thank you. and best of luck for of you. Of course, thanks for hosting, and I look to see you guys later in the tournament. Yeah. So yeah, this matchup, it's going to come down to really die roll. It's kind of important. Mm -hmm. uh, Law always wanted to go second. Yeah. Go second, they're able to, you know, build their board faster. They're able to shambles earlier. Yeah. Maybe dodge the fire fist play. Uh, if Ace goes first, they might just rip the fire fist off a of buggy and then just blow up two dudes and make it very hard for Jim to try and um, get that shambles play with the leader. Yeah, there's there's just a lot that you're you're able to do with it. So um, I, I yeah, I, I think it is a situation where Ace says, I want to go first, you want to go second, right? Yeah. More times than not. Most of your cards are odd, uh, especially if you do commit to playing Newgate in this build, which not all, everyone does. Uh, you can go there, but Jim happy with their opening hand. Joseph uh, going again. Taking a spin here, probably trying to find searchers as well as maybe a few event cards to start that chain of fire fist, discard an event, generate some advantage that way. All right, and uh, they'll be good to go in just a second. But final, final, final prediction before we get into this. who's winning? Ace. Ace. Okay. Yeah. I've, I'll, I'll I, just snap say that right now. <laughs> I'm I'm leaning towards Ace as well. I think they're. Ace has like a lot of a couple lopsided matchups, but this one is, I think, in his favor. Yeah, I would say so. All right, and you guys are good to go. He's put out his life. He's got that. He's got it. Oh, yeah. oh, oh. No, I just yeah, it's fine. Just yeah. shuffle again. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. It's okay. Yeah, just shuffle it, randomize it, and then just place the top card there. It's fine. We just know there's one less Otama. There's no. There's not four Otamas in hand. That's the only knowledge we have. The only knowledge we have. I know nothing else in this life. <laughs> All right, and uh, let's let's see. Yep, putting down the five. We can do it. Yeah. Yeah. We got there. That is five life. Not six. Not six. Not four. Not four. It's on the other side. Five. Yeah. All right. Clock is starting. We're going. We're moving. We're schmoving. Oh, it looks like uh, Jim's going first. Interesting. Top five here for Nami. Ooh, Grabbing you get that Brook. Brook. Man, I have I have really enjoyed this tack of Brook. I, I really think like the Brook in there, too. It's uh, been very neat. Earlier when I was playing Jonas, uh, the Brook came in handy. Just plays a Rush Zoro out or a Zoro, and it just generates a lot of advantage that way. It, yeah, it can cheat three cost out. Like, that is fantastic. Even if it just plays a Nami for free, that's one little budget thing you get to do and, like, being able to clear, you know, make your board wider. The fact that Nami can find it, which means you have a green card, which sometimes comes up. Yeah. Very absolutely. flexible. There we go. Getting an ace there. Going to come in handy later in the game. Seizo could get any event card in there. Or any white beard event card. So yep. Fire Fist is active. White Beard Pirates. Any of those would work. Crossfire as well. Mm -hmm. All right, for two playing. Oh, sorry. Yeah, playing another Izo. Second Izo. Izo, sorry. Izo, Izo. Mm. I. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's a whole thing where like letters in in the uh, in like English they can make a whole variety of sounds, right? In Japanese. I, it makes the E sound every time, so it's it's probably yeah. Ezo, is the is the super duper correct version. But there we go, getting an event with this card, with this Ezo. So Ezo, yeah. Got a white beer, or I'm sorry, an ace off the first Ezo, and yep. now a white beer pirates with the second Ezo. Yeah. So I mean, being able to establish two bodies on board without losing hand advantage is great, right? We see a lot of yeah. decks be able to abuse it. Obviously, Law is super duper good at abusing that, so. All right, yeah, hit him in. And any trigger? Oh, gee, is that Nami? That Nami getting popped? Are we icing the Nami, or are we going to draw a card? 
or are we not doing either? If it is Fire Fist, there's like a contention here to like hold it in hand. There is, and yeah. Not like use the trigger right away. Yeah, and uh, deciding to keep it, whatever it was in I think hand. It was a Flame Emperor. Okay, for a second it looked like a Machino, so I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> Two different yeah, cards. Yeah, just completely like the bait. <laughs> I mean, those are those are two poppable boys. That is a lot of damage. If you were to get the fire fist here, it'd be very good. I would think it's just a clear. But I don't know if it's just bait for the fire fist as well, right? I don't know. So like, the thing is, you don't want them to get to five characters. No. Because then they they're just always going to be flipping a card to hand, playing yep. something else, probably playing a five cost law. And if you slow it down so much to where they just have to keep playing dudes and they keep losing hand advantage, it's actually really good. By the way, uh, it's get, round five, not get, round no, five. No, no, chat, look away. Okay, cool. You can look again. Cool. It's always been round five. Always been round <laughs> five. <laughs> Grab an ace off that. All right, sorry for the mute. We just had to confirm some potential special yeah. guests. Nothing nothing important. We're good. So we did not uh, fire fist. We Our did not fire fist. I think we actually swung five with Izo at lead. Mm -hmm. uh. Oh, no. <laughs> and uh, not happy about that. Oh, but only Azoro. Only Azoro. That's not bad. That's actually not too bad. We will take those. Yeah. If it was Trafalgar Law, you'd feel a lot worse. But, yeah. um, you know, you did use the body earlier, which means that uh, did not find the Zoro. Or it did not find the, uh, the it from there. 2K to get out of it and then passing from there. Let's see. So we have a pretty wide board for Law here. Yeah, it has a lot of blockers making these attacks with Ace kind of not great. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have three blockers on the board. And you see here, just trying to clear the Bonnie, or I'm sorry, the Nami. Mm -hmm. Just an easy trade there. Don't want to eat a blocker or anything, and we don't want to use cards for it. All right, so five into Zoro, probably trying to bait some uh, some interaction, either you know using a blocker or a card from hand. Because if Fire Fist is in hand, I, I think you slam it here, right? Yeah, probably. I mean, yeah. Yeah, you have to. So, it's going to take some time. He has to... I think this game is going to come down to a game of kind of attrition. Mm -hmm. Like, you don't want to... You want to get a card from Law each turn. At least one, making their hand size lowered, making their searchers worse. So, this ideally is what you want to do. Swing fives, pitch a card, and then just... KO the card right afterward. There's a Bonnie here. And did Bonnie whiff? No, he has a starter deck Zoro. Okay. Yeah, so this this is kind of like a tough spot because like you want to be able to try to like, get some you know shambles again and you know is this, you think this is just a spot where they're not able to just find the pieces they want from like the the mid to high end. Uh so in this current position, your opponent just played a um a Marco. I think here you're trying to dig, which I would agree with for the most part, digging for cards to try and um, play more. And here you just see Jim. Keeping the not the Bonnie in hand, 
trying to hold it for as long as possible, making sure that it can't get KO'd by smaller attacks like the Sotama or the Zizo. And Jim still doesn't have a blocker loss. This is kind of tough for him, but he does have three blockers on the board. He's yeah, and playing the, the Star Deck Zoro too, and I've I think I've finally been I've seen enough where I'm like, all right, I'll I'll probably play one of those guys. Especially I, when you're playing the Brook. Yeah, I think it's actually a fantastic card for the most part. It's always a 6k body for the most part, and it's a 7k during your turn. So it attacks favorably well. And for the most part, since it's a 6k, most of the swings at it are either 6s or 7s. It's mm -hmm. just pitch 2k each time. So you're not missing out too much by pitching or playing this card. I think Ace here has to commit to maybe a Papa Zoro. Like, maybe a Flame Emperor here wouldn't be too bad. Just pop the Zoro and, like, push pressure on face. Yeah, I, th I think Flame Emperor would be good, too. But deciding to start with a, uh, a Whitebeard Pirates to look top five. All right, uh, getting a new gate. Ooh, okay. You don't have the Dawn to play that now. But next turn you do. Yeah, but will you... Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, you'll probably have enough time to play it next turn, right? Surely. I mean, we're at two life. We have Marco blockers in hand. We're not... But they're not on so. board, though. <laughs> <laughs> they can get on the board. They can get on the board. They can get there. They we have, have a lot of events in hand. Pretty thick hand, yeah. Yeah. What are your thoughts on like the striker versions of Ace? Uh... I think they're a lot slower, mm -hmm. but they do give you more cards, so there might be reason to actually run them. I do like Striker as a card, though. Yeah. I think that if you're playing Striker, it allows you to play more a variety of events in your deck. It's mm -hmm. so, like you could play like Round Table, maybe. We'll play another Marco to probably pop this Chopper. Uh, probably the probably beige, the beige, right? Yeah, no green characters. Yeah. Well, he has the body in hand, but still. Um, the Striker is very good. I just think that it needs time because I think this meta is too fast mm -hmm. to be using it so much. Yeah, because it does. It is too dawn each turn to get one event. Mm -hmm. So I think if we wait later, when the meta is slower, it'll be um, it'll be more viable. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like Ace is definitely a deck you can keep coming back to if there just is generically good red event cards. So. Uh, we found a blocker law. Finally, yeah. This is, uh, you know, I think he's been digging for that for a long time. So and you kind of get in the spot too. Like once your Bonnie whiffs with it and you can't find it, you just can't search anymore unless it's a Bonnie because chances are the next five will have that law you've been looking for. All right, so putting uh, playing the Brook, which puts two Dawn underneath something. So it's going to be put underneath the three drop Zoro there. So it's currently an 8K. The starter deck Zoro. Uh, 9k now. But swing with the uh, swing with the Zora, uh, the Law first. Again, you gotta be really careful here because there can be cards in in secure in your life that you know hits cards on board, which means you're not set up to do your shambles anymore. So yeah. we know that Zoro is safe, though. That Zoro is definitely safe, I would say. All right. Uh, looks like 2k to get out of it. And Joe's board actually looks very good. I think that having the multiple Marcos there is going to help him. Mm -hmm. The issue, though, is he's going to have to deal with this blocker law. Yeah. And I just don't see how we're going to push through it and also play Newgate the same turn. Exactly. Like, you've, you've somewhat committed to saying Newgate's what my next turn is going to be. And uh, by doing that, like, Jim can now put him in a position where Newgate just does not look good. Yeah. So. Oh, interesting. I thought we'd pay, definitely pick up the brook, right? Well, it looks like he's bouncing it back to play it again uh, okay. to save it. But in that case, I, uh, no, I, I guess... I don't yeah. feel I need to... I still feel like I can Newgate now and be fine. Yeah. I kind of... You know, a lot of people, I think, would have snapped into the Rush Zoro. So then you could be able to like attack with it again and stuff. But maybe he's saying, I value how big the Zoro can be later game. And maybe you want to try a combo with the Star deck. But it's interesting. I actually don't think we can play Newgate here. Because we don't have a blocker on the board. You gotta make a decision. You've been flipping and flopping. Yeah, I know. I've been flipping and flopping. Thousand percent commit. We're not playing Newgate this turn. All right. 
Um, All right, call into Joseph. Okay, Joseph, you can play it now. <laughs> <laughs> just telegraph it to yeah, him. Yeah. Just be like, play it. <laughs> I mean, you guys aren't on the same wavelength. Like, you, you sat on the wrong side of the table already. Like, just... I'm already all over the place, but I just... Yeah, we just can't play that card. Oh, but he does have the Sace. The Sace is pretty good. Oh, is this a Fire Fist? Yeah. It is. Yeah, that is that is wow. a very tasty card right now. Really well-timed Fire Fist, too. Mm -hmm. And now we get to clear most of the board here and not... We, we, we have a very high chance of living through this next turn. Yeah, so it's it's a 10-cost combo, which means uh, you can barely make it. But yeah, using Fire Fist in conjunction with using Ace to get cards into play uh, into the range for it is, is very, very strong. So I think Joseph was playing... You know, making waiting until this happened and uh you know he's had that fire fist i think since turn one i think it was his first card in life right no i think it was the flame emperor okay maybe the flame emperor. he's had it he in a long time this, he found this a while ago i think but bis being a uh, very patient with it and deciding you know the best way to get it you know is to, to try to get a five drop oh. uh just oh he saw another one <laughs> he did not have to show him that no 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 <laughs> the same digimon but uh, I think that's a really strong spot. You just have to, uh, you know, I would not be very worried about losing on this next turn either. You are tapped out, but... Especially the board being, you know, Brook, Beige, Law. Yeah. Actually, I don't know. If you put <sighs> four down on that Beige, you can start swinging. I... The one good thing about Ace is we know that one new gate is dead, right? But with his leader effect from the Ace, none of the... Any events in hand are not dead at zero cards, right? Yeah. I... I do think that the, there is a world where you just actually put the Dawn underneath the Brook and without blockers or anything. Maybe go for it, yeah. Yeah, maybe a, a 7k swing and a 10k swing or an 8 and a 9. I think that could actually maybe have gotten it. Yeah, especially being tapped out here. Tapped out, yeah. It is a lot to ask for. But I don't think, I mean, if you if you try to just you know hunker down this next round, I don't think you get there. You just have so many attacks with Ace right now. He's another Bonnie. Let's see, he has a restand law as an option, as well as starter Zoro and a beige. Grabbing the starter Zoro. So let's see here, you play a chopper. We shambles, bounce, either brook or Dedan, depending on what our hand is. Brook for more counter power yeah we get a 7k swing in again like you, you got to be careful with this too because there can be something in that life to yeah, trigger if and a, if it's a jet pistol this oh oh he's thinking oh this could okay making me nervous so it's i think a guard point i think so it was like the buff up type of deal oh there's like no counters in hand yeah well now he's just got 3k and now he's got 4k so, okay, three blockers, 4K. We have one, two, three, four attacks. If we... If you have another Flame Emperor, you probably win. Or a Fire Fist. A Fire Fist, yeah, yeah, yeah. If we have another Fire Fist, we're big chilling. But I think he might just have Flame Emperor, which actually is still really good. Mm-hmm. The only thing is that, like, it's just a big Dawn investment for it, right? Oh, he's got kind of a wide hand. I mean, if we just go sevens with it on top of the... Like, because we could just save our leader swing for last. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because ace aces kind of have something unique where more more times than not, cards in hand are just dead on offense. But since you can pitch them offensively with your ace leader effect, you're able to uh, to get there. Okay, that's just trash. Yeah. Head and hands. Jim did leave the one dawn open there. Uh, that one dawn open can signify um, radical beam. Let's see, and real quick, so MacGyver's undefeated at table one right now, beating Avi, and then Jonas is still playing Gage on table two. If Jonas loses, we're done after five rounds, and they're going to take a probably a tiny break and then go into a um, a uh, the top cut since we do have top eight cut. A six K swing at lead. Are you trying to bait out these blockers early or just cards in hand? All right, six in lead. I think he's like, no matter, like, okay, going down, okay, saying, 
I so cannot lose. Oh, this week, man. another. He had two Trafalgar Laws in hand. That's crazy. All right, so you can Flame Emperor, get rid of a blocker, and then put the rest of the Dawn underneath Izo. Yeah, but then, well, we know he has Bonnie in hand, so. Yeah, yeah, that's true. It doesn't work out, though. Well, that that could work out if we didn't know about the Bonnie, but he bounced it. If you had, like, a Jet Pistol in hand, I think you win right now. I think if you have Seaquake. If you have Seaquake. <laughs> we're in that, <laughs> it's that time of the day. I mean, the second time we're. Seaquake is pretty good. It is. It is. I think he's only like, there's the one Dawn up, right? You always got to be like, okay, is that Radical Beam? What do we have in our hand? There's a new gate? Are we just playing? No, we're dead if we play new gate. Yeah. We need to try and push for game. Yeah. I mean, can you do, you still have nine Dawn. Put five under Otama. We can buggy search. <laughs> That's no, true. Like, look, that's true. That's search, true. Try and find a... Seaquake or Jet Pistol. Even Fire Fist. I don't like this. I don't like it either, but it's gonna force the block. Okay. Yeah, because you got you want to get the weenie out because uh. Oh, we do have blocker Marco too. But okay. I don't know how good that is. Oh, really, just committing to that. Oh. Double block. I don't know. I don't. I, I think you at least left Dawn open. I think this is the losing play. Yeah. With the zero cards left in life. He's got three swings right there, and now you're tapped out. So all these events. I mean, you can still use them. You just pitch them. Yeah, I got realistically what three K counter power. In hand? Yeah, I mean he knows his deck better than us, right? So here, here's my idea. Joseph probably thinks, okay, Radical Beam's in hand. I'm playing around Radical Beam, so this is the play, right? Mm -hmm. Radical Beam was not in hand, so that's not not his fault, but just rough. Yeah. If he plays Seaquake, 100% buggy. Find Seaquake, you have enough to win, right? Yeah. It's a fair point. <laughs> I don't know, but like it's perfect knowledge as us. It's it's difficult, right? And I, but I, I just don't think these blockers are nice. But and they block two attacks. They're obviously going to block either anything that's bigger than seven, because mm -hmm. he can get out of seven K swing. It's the other swings he can't get out of. Yeah, and there's guaranteed four swings out there that can become five very easily. Half most of them are already there, right? So what are swings are five, seven, seven, nine? Mm-hmm. Right. I think so, because you can Five, do one dawn, two dawn. That's two, three dawn, or I'm sorry, four. That's so it's five, seven, seven, eleven. Yeah, and we have a buggy and newgate in hand, and then probably just one more one k. Either an event or oh yeah, flame emperor, radical beam, buggy, newgate, and one more card. I think you should have. Put one last underneath your ace. I think having that one open for potential radical beam was way yeah. better. Yeah. It makes it so you don't have to block one of these 7k swings. Yeah. I think being at zero life is also just really rough. Oh, Jonas lost. All right. This is, uh, we're done after this round. At least we're for Swiss. All right. And yep, it's going to be. Yeah, that is it. Jim takes it. Go. There it is. That buggy. That it buggy. Strange, yeah. Is he gonna? Let... Oh wait. Wait. What was that? It was an event. It was an event of some kind. Could have made a difference for sure. Maybe the buggy getting the event actually would have made the difference. Right? I, th I think so, it's right? Okay. Extra. So. Yeah. And we've got Jim here. How you doing, Jim? Hey, pretty good. Good to see you. All right. Boom. I'm not Avi. I make man. There it is. All right. What's up? Close match. It was. I got lucky at the end. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because I think, uh, you know, when you when you're staring at, across the board, there's ace there, and all all your defensive blockers like, oh, they're not going to survive, right? Right. Yeah. And uh, 
I think I think he was really patient. I think he like the fire fist mid game was oh, very strong, yeah, right? That, that was brutal. It, it put me so far behind. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, I, I was able to build back up just because I had the two Bonnies in my opening, so yeah. I was able to keep those going and keep me in the game. And then yeah, but it was it, it, those probably kept me just in position just enough to be able to like hope that 991 was going to be good enough yeah for sure and like you were you know your your laws were hiding in your life for a long time right yeah and they were having a, a tough time getting those so you finally were able to get them established but mm-hmm. um yeah the, the temple game was very weird and yeah. uh yeah the ace can be very terrifying when you want to make a whiteboard exactly yeah especially with the fire fist like like even if he uses the fire fist earlier i uh because the 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 fact that it just blows two things up mm-hmm. it just puts you so far behind early yep. on when you need to when that if they do it early like it puts you so far behind because it's you're probably like starting to get clunked with like your your top end yeah but then um but if, even if they do it late like if they do it late then they are able to set up like the ace fire fist or even like otama fire fist is like good yeah enough. yeah and that that last turn too i think I, if he he didn't have anything he had a buggy in hand which I, we we were saying in the booth here that that could have definitely been played and find the answer he's looking for. Yeah, so. um, he he was he actually was taking the time to like count how many cards he had actually already gone through. Oh, sure, deck. yeah, yeah, yeah. And and based off of like how many cards he would already seen, like he he figured that the buggy was probably not the right play. Mm-hmm. But he did he did mess up by, uh, not he 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 attached like one too many dawn and then yeah to his leader. Yeah, he yeah. couldn't yeah. leave up the rad beam. Yeah, because I think he if leader only had like six dawn underneath, it would have been just as strong and. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that was just a little unfortunate. Like, just how how much of a difference one Don can make in this game is crazy. Uh, yeah, it's insane. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, well, I think with that, uh, we are done with uh, with Swiss. So you should be getting your X one right now, right? Yes. Yeah. So you should be getting that top eight. So congratulations on thank that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we we will be doing a probably like a smaller like administrative break between Swiss and top eight, but uh, three rounds, single elimination, best yep. of three, uh, with an hour long. Any any differences with playing law with uh with best of three? I don't think so. Uh, I just have to hope that I get to win the die roll and like get yeah. to pick second the first time around because mm-hmm. the difference between going first and second with that deck is massive. Yeah, who who won the die roll for that game? Uh, Joe did. Joe did. He he wanted to go second, yeah. right? Okay, interesting. Yeah, because I think Ace usually has like a lot of good going first cards that are really good. And yeah, um, I think while they do have a lot of good going first cards, so like they, them being on the play isn't bad. Like I think with how. Except for maybe Zoro, like I think most of the decks just want to go second, just because that extra card always ends up mattering. That's true. That's true. So, well, cool. Well, appreciate you taking the time. Yeah, for sure. Uh, take a tiny break. Uh, good luck on the top eight, yep, and uh, we'll you. see you in there. All right. Thank you. Right, bye bye. And uh, we do have our top eight cut, so we're gonna jump on over there right now. It's going to be uh, MacGyver March, who is our undefeated player with Newgate, uh, playing against Cole, uh, who f- snuck in at eighth place with that law. So. Uh, we're going to have them go their way. It's going to be a best of three uh, hour long. We'll see if they take that long for it too. But um, we're going to go from there. And I don't think we ha- we haven't seen this matchup on stream yet, right? We have not. We have watched a lot of Newgate versus Zoro. Yeah. Um, Newgate versus Katakuri. Yep. I think those are going to be covered. And now we've got Law versus uh, Newgate. So this matchup is going to be a lot slower, I think, for most of them. Mm -hmm. Law is going to be kind of building their turn. Again, building that board. And Wiper does have a good way to clear multiple of those things in one turn, especially active characters. Sure, they have a Marco to clear one, but not clearing two or three at a time. So really, the Newgate player is going to try and establish their own board of bigger bodies against Law, who has a lot smaller ones that are going to turn into the five drop Laws, the Zoros, etc. And you'll see Law poke for a little bit in the beginning and then get bigger swings with like a restand Law later in the game. Yeah. Um, and, you know, this is obviously a matchup that's existed since the last set, right? Uh, I think Law is by and large the same. What's changed for Newgate, do you think, in this matchup? Newgate definitely has a few more tools. I think it's a lot more consistent of a deck. It mm-hmm. has Ezos now to kind of find the missing pieces in the curve that it might have missed beforehand. And it also has five cost Marco as another tool to play earlier in the game that can stay for a long time, right? You have the Marco that just sits there. You pitch cards to it to keep it alive. And mainly that will be the main source of that card dealing pressure type wise. And here you see that uh, MacGyver was first in seed. So he obviously chose to go second. And these matches are best of three. Yes, for sure. Which might make an impact going into time rules and such. 
but we'll have to see later on based on this match whom wins game one and then how it's looking for game two for sure and uh it looks like uh using the whitebeard pirates look top five seeing what we get there and also uh the top eight consists of three rob luchis two zoros two laws and this is our only newgate player so uh going through the matches we have this one here we have a zoro versus luchi we have a law versus luchi and then another zoro versus luchi so um Obviously, a lot of Lucci going on here and in this top eight. And no yellow to get into this top eight either. Yeah, no yellow players whatsoever getting into this top eight. It is strictly mainly red for the most part and Lucci's, so. For sure. Which, uh, not not too surprising, but, uh, you know, it's red's only five of the top eight. <laughs> only five, you know, not too many. <laughs> Maybe four if it's half red for law, right? Yeah. So, you know. The good news is is that all the Lucci players are not playing against each other. Yes. Which means we will probably have a Lucci on stream next. Guaranteed top four Lucci. You guaranteed love to see it. Guaranteed top four Lucci. No, wait. You are, you are not guaranteed because I'm not playing. You have to play him. My bad. Guaranteed oh. zero Luchis in top four. <laughs> not like this. All right. So doing uh, some start. We haven't seen like a lot of... Uh, like vanillas played for Newgate players. Like we see these at most, and if you go second, I think that's like the best turn for or for Dawn play, right? Oh, and you see Cole here using a card that a lot of uh, Zoro decks, or I'm sorry, a lot of Law decks kind of not favor anymore. The Jet Pistol, mm -hmm. um, great card in set one, and set two. If you triggered our life, it was insane. But now a lot of players kind of opted to move away from that and go towards more of a kind of build the board type of deal i think rad beam has been the new kind of event card to go in there for a more defensive tool i think mm -hmm. so it was really good here it cleared the atmos which is a lot of pressure relieved from cole but you see he has no characters on the board no only one zoro only one zoro which is i guess a character right so he has a character on board sure just one sure just one You're just one off just that's one. fine that's fine we need five in order to do the thing so we're four behind i mean one and zero are almost the same thing yeah but yeah, that Zoro is pretty good for hanging around, especially since it's going to be a 6k on the other side, which means, um, you know, it's a little bit easier to defend if you need to. Um, and, you know, not a lot of pressure from, from MacGyver that much. Um, I was deciding to yeah, attack 7k into the new gate. So here, I don't agree with swinging this card, just because next turn my opponent can go ace mm -hmm. and then minus it and clear it off the board for sure. So it definitely was kind of a weirder type of attack there. And yeah. now we have to Dan. So trying to build that board up again. Probably going to grab the chopper. I think that was yeah. his only target. So he's trying to build that board again, get to that five for shambles, and establish the board for next turn maybe. Oh, we see another attack for six. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. And I, I think he bombed deck another chopper. So that's all the choppers have been played essentially in this game. One's at the bottom of the deck. The other three are right there. Yeah, and you see here, the Zoro being a 6k is very good, because the 6k would have probably gotten a 2k. Now mm -hmm. you can pitch 1k to it. 1k, yeah. All right, and... Uh, and he's just trying to keep the Zoro alive, because only form of pressure here on the board currently. And next turn, you can get big swings in with it, with a restand lock, which I see he has in his hand there. Or I think... Yeah, he had one. Yeah, I think hand. he does, yeah. Yeah, he pitched one earlier, but he has one. Yeah, you mean so. you're, you're not the kind of guy to put Don underneath a one-drop blocker and swing with it? Absolutely not. No, it's a terrible play? I'm not putting five Don in a chopper. <laughs> Although, if I were to win the game and say that Tony Tony Chopper yeah. defeated Edward Newgate, yeah. Yeah, okay. That, that's the only time I can condone it. But he does play Machino in his deck, so we might see that play happen. It's, <laughs> it's a possibility. Okay, we'll, uh, we'll cut to the end. We'll see what happens. <laughs> Let me just real quickly fast forward Yeah, fast here. forward, yeah. <laughs> Ooh, oh, no. he didn't have yeah, it. Yeah, he didn't have it. Ah, never have it. You see MacGyver here just keeps on turning cards to his hand. And, ooh, a second Marco coming down. That has to be one of the better cards in the matchup. Just a 5 cost 6k, KOing a 3k. It removes a body right on play. Do you like getting rid of the Dedan, though? Or would you have tempted to get rid of another one of the choppers? So, if I get rid of the Dedan, it makes my opponent's turn a lot weirder mm -hmm. just because the dance is searcher and he's just going to probably play uh blocker law bounce it to hand and then somehow play it again to get another search off by eliminating that card sure he has two blockers left but he doesn't have a, a viable search engine on the board and by doing that and by killing the dan you cut off the way of him drawing cards which is very important 
and you can kind of push for game easier that way. Because less cards means less chances to defend. 6k swings, 7k swings, and so forth. He has a Machino in hand. He, he does. Can still do it. Just... <laughs> he can still do it. Tap on the glass, like, do it. <laughs> <laughs> Play him. A very interesting turn, for sure. We've got those shiny dons. We, uh... There's a little bit of external lighting, which is, uh, man, let me just tell you, the sun in here, Arizona, it's on, it works overtime. <laughs> it's very hot out here. I hear you see Cole playing the Restand Law, trying to get those attacks in. MacGyver eventually taking one. Oh, he has enough for this play. Bouncing the Machino, I would assume. Yeah, and then... Probably bouncing back. Oh, and then playing that again. Playing yeah, again. yeah, yeah. Uh, a little suboptimal because you could have pumped up one of the choppers with the Machino before you did that, but ah, uh, yeah, yeah, we we will forgive it this. We will forgive this one time, all right. But it could be a game changer next time if he misses it. Oh, don't hit my camera. <laughs> don't hit the camera. Please. Do not hit camera, please. Let's see. All right, so swings in uh, with both Marcos. First one. Hit into the life. Second one, seven, or it's just a 6k hitting into the leader. So you can block this if you want with your myriad of blockers, but. Well, remember, when we saw MacGyver in his Swiss game, he had Rush Leafy in his deck. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That is a viable option. And I don't know if Cole knows about that, which means if he takes this life, we might just see Luffy dump him. Yeah. Dump the, dump the Don, get mm -hmm. in there. Yeah, yeah. So Ooh. it said uh, nine, nine cost new gates, pretty good. Um,. You do, you know, you do have these six K markers they can swing into, but I think it's okay for for kind of this matchup against against uh, Zora. It might be a little bit different, but against Law, I think it's okay. Yeah. And again, top eight for right now, we have three Luchis, two Zoros, two Laws, and our single New Gate player here with MacGyver. And MacGyver was our undefeated in Swiss, so he went to five zero. And uh, Cole here is a. Uh, Currently snuck in with a with an X one record. Yeah. So typically when I'm playing Newgate against a law deck, it's not really my favorite card in the matchup, mm -hmm. just because it allows my opponent to set up a turn of multiple law blockers, mm -hmm. getting itself established. But since we have these Marcos on the board, I don't see it being that big of a deal yeah. because they're applying so much pressure. Yeah, and like the the power difference is a little weird, but you can get like rid of these one drop blockers for quote unquote free, which is really nice. So yeah. that removal is good. I'm assuming that Cole here is attacking one of the Marcos, mm -hmm. and I think that MacGyver's just going to let it go. These ones are obviously harder to keep alive. You need to pitch events, so they're very yeah. specific in what they do. The Dan here, going to look at top five. I would probably try to pick either a 2K counter or something else. Oh! Uh, yeah, picking nothing is not, not what you want. Not the answer. Mm -hmm. So yeah, here I would just keep pressuring the the Marcos, getting as many cards out of hand as possible. Mm -hmm. You could go an AK swing with leader. I would probably go like maybe a six with the restand, eight with lead. Try and pitch as many cards as possible here. And then just a six K swing. Gonna get a one K out. And then I'm assuming an eight here. Just going to use the effect, pitching a guard point. And we see here, the damn bounce. Play that. And probably pick up our rush or a. Yeah, just yeah. probably pick it up or be playing it down. Yeah, even just to play it. Yeah, yeah I think why so. not? Yeah. We don't want to play a carpet counter either. Yeah. And so now it's getting in a tough position here. We do have three blockers, which is good. So far, contest most of the swings on the board. Oh, just immediately with the, the marker, though, so. Yeah. I'm going to assume that's a second new gate coming down. It has to be, right? Like you're just trying to say, oh, but you don't block with the chopper either. Because for me, I just snap block with chopper at that point. Uh, It kind of depends. Yeah. Okay. So if they play second one, now your chopper at least gets a block in. Mm -hmm. And this new gate, is it going to connect here? Yeah, yeah, I think it'd have to. I would ask cards in hand and see if we can try and get them. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's, yeah. It is very hard when you're an 8K base and especially one life but I just don't see how we're getting through this turn. Yeah, unfortunately, you don't even have your chopper to, you know, boost up with your Machino anymore, so that's, the it play is off the it table. It was a misplay, honestly. Yeah, you should have kept the chopper around. 
What was he thinking? So we could try getting rid of the Marco, have two blocks up for the new gates, and then we're still probably losing to a leader swing. We have a Nami in hand. Nami is good. You have a Nami on board. Nami's good on board. Most of the time. Oh, 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 oh. oh, oh. oh. Still. <laughs> not the card he was looking for. Definitely not. Yeah, any more than two of that Zoro, you're in a really bad spot. It's it is a little bit clunky in hand. Here you go, eight K swing at the leader. You know there there oh, are I no. I think oh, it's at the Marco. Okay, that's fair. I just don't see how we're getting out of the the big swing. You know, yeah. Like we we can get out of two ten Ks, but sixteen. No, I don't know. How we're getting that one. Clearly, answer is to play a third blocker <laughs> that you do not have. Third one, because we uh, we saw a Compone Game Beige just get bomb decked pretty Here tough. We go. Going five deep again. Well, there's like no choppers left though. There's a Rush Soro though. I don't know what that accomplishes. Yeah, I was gonna say. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, maybe we just need to go like eight. Yeah, we just need to clear this Marco somehow. Does he have more events in hand? Well, I mean, he left one up. Let's see. And he trashed a white beer pirates to keep the marker around, so probably he does. I'm guessing there's at least a new uh, round of beam or something else. Eight into the Marco. Yeah, and then you can swing 6k into the Marco with the five cost law if needed. All right, oh, yeah, so man. yeah, rad beam out. I think it's just eight. Oh, yeah. Okay. Not even wanting to bounce the... I, I'd be really tempted to bounce the law back and then play the Zoro and swing with it once. Right. That's a fair point. I think he just needs to... I think if he bluffs up the rad beam, it's a little bit better. Mm -hmm. You see my guy over here just playing and go for game, and I think he knows every card in Cole's hand. Minus one. There's two cards in hand. Yeah. It, not a lot. <laughs> no, no card left in life for, uh, for Cole either. Yeah, so. it's not looking like it's going to be too great here. And yep, you just see the 6k swing here. It's going to eat a blocker. He only has 1k in hand. Oh, yeah. And then... Do you think it's time to scoop and go to the next game? I th I think so. I can just walk over there and tell him that. <laughs> yeah, so the, the law is not... Unfortunately, small enough to say go for it there. And then 12k... Yeah, all right. Okay. All right. Yeah. So I MacGyver... mean, that's like a few seconds, but still. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A few seconds counts sometimes. It does. So MacGyver takes game number one there. And we are going into game number two. And this is where I'd say normally, like, oh, they're diving into their side decks. But uh, there's no side decks, there's in, this no side decks in this game. And that was pretty fast. I mean, we it was, what, a 15-minute game, mm -hmm. I'd say? So definitely a lot faster than I thought it was going to be. Yeah, you... you <laughs> I think I told you before. Yeah, you looked me in the eyes like, this is going to be a slog. slog. <laughs> <laughs> it... Let's see. Yeah. And uh, well, we just... we. How how important do you think uh, law deciding who goes first is gonna you know make a difference in this one? Probably very. Probably very. So, okay. The main thing is, Cole has to somehow win going first against Newgate. I don't know if he can do that. Yeah, that's. It's a very tough call. So I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm saying it's very hard. It's just improbable. I don't know. If Michael <laughs> did it. Yeah. <laughs> right. But yeah. this is that was that was. Uh, Newgate with less tools, right? Like this, this Marco makes such a big difference. It it pairs into yeah, Trafalgar Law so well. Being able to pop pretty much any card on their like early card guy are on their board it comes yeah. out on turn five. Like you know, Newgates would tech Vistas previously into the builds just to do well against Law. Now that you have a better in arced type Vista, you're you're sitting very pretty. Yeah. And the yeah the Marco also just trades into the six uh, the the blocker very well too. Yeah. It's not a free block anymore. All right. There's yeah. And it's it's so funny in this matchup too. Like yeah, sure. There's ten life on the board, but six of them have <laughs> belong to the Newgate player. Yeah. 
And it's definitely kind of interesting. So MacGyver probably mulliganing here, trying to find either a searcher or more pieces to fit that curve out. For the most part, I think that if he hits his curve consistently going first, it'll probably be very good for him. Because mm -hmm. I think going Newgate on your like fourth turn is very powerful. I'm sorry, it'll be there fourth or fifth. I'm not too certain. One. One, three, three five, five, seven, nine. nine okay, fifth, so fifth. Fifth, all fifth right. Turn. Finger math is still a thing. Finger math is still a thing. You see here MacGyver just not playing anything in passing. Pretty typical for the most part. It's like Ezo or Wipe Your Pirates. You have eight searchers, but sometimes yeah. you just don't open them. Or sometimes they're the first life. They're always the first life, actually. Yeah. When are we adding buggy to this buggy to this list? Never. <laughs> I think I talked about this with uh, Jonas beforehand. I was uh -huh. like, okay, we play buggy in set four, but we have the zero cost event mm -hmm. that gives us plus three. That's the only way you can justify playing the card. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you play you play a good amount of events as is in, in Newgate, right? If it's a brick. That One you can keys matter in this deck, surprisingly. Yeah, they and do. And two keys matter a lot, too. So, taking stuff out for those for non-counterable cards seems bad. All right. Well, we're going. Uh, yeah, ascending turn four life to two. All right. Touch all your dawn to lead and swing ten. Wait, three, three. Yeah, because he, he only had one attack. Yeah, Newgate's strong, but he can't punch twice. If only. If only. If only. I give it two more sets before they make <laughs> a double attack leader. Yeah. Man, that's that's so funny. Like, in, there is one in Dragon Ball when the game first came out that yeah. it, its only effect is I have double strike, and it was never good. It was never viable. Yeah. And like, meanwhile, this game would be busted. Wait till we get the double attack, uh, banish leader. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We'll have someone make a rap song about that too. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> that was a deep cut. Yeah. All right. And, uh, okay, just playing the Otama. Just Otama, target your leader. Yeah. yeah I wish it worked like works that. Works that way. No. Every time. Not even a little bit. <laughs> All right, swinging the 6K into the leader, probably taking this unless you want to drop a 2K. And uh, for people who are interested uh, for these top eight lists, they will be, they will be on my website and my YouTube uh, probably Monday morning. Oh, I forgot the S. Dang. Oh. How smooth am I? You failed your own command. Yeah, my own command. Laugh at him. I have I have a very upsetting hit rate for my own commands. Oh man! I made a turning command. I'm keep putting like oh exclamation mark tournament. Why isn't it working? <laughs> <laughs> he got the Nami here. Yeah. So we do have shambles this turn. Yeah, and uh, a good amount of red on board, so you can go into a a law if you have it. Yeah, Power Potato, you said most broken site, so I'm like, oh my gosh, is it down again? Like, <laughs> Yeah, I thought that. I'm like, usually when you say broken in sites together, you're like, oh god, I gotta wake up the engineer. <laughs> so Law wants to keep putting the pressure on. Playing the Nami there. Mm -hmm. What are we trying to find? A Zoro, maybe? Zoro would be good. Uh, oh, and the last card's a starter deck Zoro. Yeah, and we, we did see the Brook, which is it's a little bit too late for Brook to be handy at this point. So. Yeah, I think when I talked to Cole about this, he said the Brook is only good on two turns. When you're at four Dawn or six Dawn, that's yes. it. Yeah. Other than that, it's a 1K counter. So I know when he, so Cole got second place at, at Locals last night, too. So yeah. uh, only losing. And honestly, he had a really, really good game against uh, Jonas. Um, but um, yeah, those, those Brooks did very well. I think he said he was playing four last night, which I was... I was very surprised about. That's a lot. Uh, you only see it on two turns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then after that, you go from there. Let's see. Oh, and uh, wow. Clay's already beat. Clay's already beat Gage. Gage. So, and I think Clay Clay's on Lucci, right? Uh, yeah. All right, guaranteed. So he beat guaranteed he beat Zoro. Lucci. Dang, that's quick. And Cole here trying to keep his life total at two. I think that's two. Um, I think it's two, two. Two as well, right? Yeah, it's two. Two. You yeah. can just walk over there and spread them out. <laughs> you just want me to go over there and walk there? It's yeah, fun. yeah, just like, don't even say anything, right? You're just like, no, 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 I'm kidding. You're good, you're good. <laughs> I'm about to do it. You're about to do it. Yeah. If we were we were more unsure, perhaps, 
but it would just be really like throw them out of the game like you just come over there like don't even make eye contact just like grunt <laughs> like Ugh. no shoot I guess when MacGyver played the ace, he targeted the law and something else. Mm. And he was just going to snap block pitch 2k, but... Yeah, that's not that's not going to happen. Yeah. I mean, it could happen, but there's the, the snap timing is gone. It is now a, it is a, a, a thoughtful block. Interesting. Just throwing it away there. Hmm. I think he has another one in hand. I would hope so. That that's right. like the best card in your deck. So we put all the dawn on Zoro, swing at leader, put mm -hmm. off restand, swing again, and MacGyver goes, Okay, I guess I take two life. <laughs> <laughs> you did it. He did it. He got him to zero. I um is there like the worst thing about the, the five drop law is though, um it's it's hard for you to be able to bounce it itself back to your hand to uh to get the effect off. Um is there anything that we could we that we have that could be using for that like anytime soon you think or what do you mean like bouncing five drop law back to your hand so you could play it again so you could use its effect is that a thing no no it's not a thing <laughs> but it could be a thing oh like use the leader ability law yeah, to yeah, bounce yeah. five costs to our hand yeah 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 uh, it could, i could see that like if we have like maybe a rush sora that we need to play mm -hmm. and we have like seven don you know play rush sora off it bounce it to hand yeah yeah and then you get to play rush sora again as well yeah yeah but you're a 6k leader, so... Yes. And right, look at that top 5. Think about getting another Zora. Zora's very good. So, 6k during your turn, with, or during their turn, which matters, because you could pitch 1ks to save it as opposed to pitching 2ks. Yeah, so my only thing about it is that, yes, the Zoro came out for one cheaper, and I think it makes sense when you're playing the film Brook, but at the same time... You know, Filmbrook for one more Dawn investment once, it's always a 6k, right? So me personally here, we should probably pick up a 2k. Yes. I don't think we pick up both. Oh, it's so interesting. Well, that's one of those decks that I like, I think I know what to do, <laughs> but then I'm like, nope. No. Because <laughs> like we've, we searched off Nami so much, I don't know what else is left. Like maybe Brooks. I guess Brooks are still in there, right? All mm -hmm. the Filmbrooks and stuff. So you're at least getting a 1k. Oh, uh, I don't think he tapped his leader, so that might just be a 6k lead. No, I'm kidding. I'm joking. I'm joking. Yeah, let me go out there and be like, yeah, 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 yeah you, you did. actually didn't tap your leader. Did you verbally say it? No? Okay. No, yeah. So. <laughs> we have mics in here, so we know if you're, you're lying, so. Yeah. <laughs> just sweating. So like, let's start that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I will say, I, th I think Cole's in a really good spot. Yeah, I think this is the best one. He could definitely swing big with these Zoros. I mean, 4 Dawn is 10k each of them. So he can mm -hmm. go like 10-10 Law Effect, pick up another 2k. Um, maybe play a blocker or restand and get another 10k swing in. Mm -hmm. That actually is a lot of pressure. Yeah, even even though it's an 8k leader, uh, you, you've you got your complete board. Like, this is you know, you know the board he ended on last turn, so it I was mean, already good. He's tapped out. Yes. Events do not exist now. Mm-mm. He's free from events. There are no blockers. We he hasn't established a marker with this game either, which is again usually something that helps. Oh, he's just oh just hitting him. How much Don is that? He has four left, so six. So it's a twelve k swing. Yeah, it's twelve k swing. All right, bouncing back, Brook to probably play another Zora. Oh, that is yeah, huge. Yeah. Again. There's right. so many cards in hand. And I would not blame him for attaching two down to the other Zoro. And then playing a... Yeah, sure. Sure. Sure, sure. Dude, there's like no way we can lose from the spot. As of right now. As of right now. <laughs> Let me rephrase. The game is over. We can still lose. The game is over. <laughs> no, no, no. They should be shuffling their decks again. All right. All right. Please, Lord. Have <laughs> 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 Nick MacGyver win. It'd, it'd be so funny. Eight at lead again. Okay. That was a quick snap 10. I think we just get... We had the other restand in hand, right? Yeah, if, we, okay. if we have another restand, yeah, you just... Oh, we're chilling. We're chilling. You just win. We're winning. I don't know if we win. Win. Well, you can put... We can make it... Let's see. We need to play a one cost if we don't block this. 
So we need to play one, which means we have nine Don left. Two free stands, so seven, seven. But there's a, there's a brook in there, so you can put the use the brook to put two underneath the oh. Zoro too. That's good math. <laughs> See, this is why he's the law player. I'm not the law player. Pan pan over to like my dusty, you know, degree <laughs> in math. Like, it's a better degree. <laughs> <laughs> it's a degree. That's true. Which is. Yeah. Oh, and then we could pick up the brook and play the restand lot. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is Giga Brain. This is why I can't play that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think he's yeah saying. Oh. So you'd have to play another guy, but that's fine. Ooh, what if he plays two brooks? Yo, two brooks. Yeah. Two brooks. Two busted. You mean? Would be kind of crazy. Uh, Machino though. Ah, there's no choppers on board though. Shame. I just want to say chopper destroyed Whitebeard. And the voice actor would probably go. <laughs> hey, can we? Can you come over here real quick? Just I, I know it's I know it's a shame. Can you just come back here, say one line. Thank you. So it looks like he's Otama in the white beard. I think he's playing the clear at this turn. Pretty good plan. Double Otama. Okay, we definitely clear. In it. Yeah, I. I agree with this. We're just gonna bounce him to hand anyway. Sure. And there's potential for Otama to win the game with. <laughs> When you're right, you're right. He had to read the Zoro. First mistake. First mistake was reading the Zoro. Second mistake was not getting rid of the Zoro. Yeah, he didn't even have to fight that Zoro too much because he got another one right up there too. Let's see. Yeah, so we, we got... What? Oh, so we're waiting for MacGyver. Did he... Yeah, he did counter out. He did counter yeah, the thatch. He yeah, he discarded yeah. the thatch. All right, so putting two underneath Zoro, so 8k. Eight, eight to six. And we still have Restail on hand. Remember that. Yeah, we do. Maybe we're just trying to bait out the rad beam and then we just slam face. I I'm very surprised that he didn't just if he if restand law is truly in there, you have to spend five dawn, so it'd be Maybe he doesn't have restand law. Maybe he doesn't. I feel like he did. Cause then you, cause you could put two with Brook, so that's a two a free two there. You'd have to spend one more to play something in three, so seven on top of your Zoro, so seven plus or so six plus seven would have been 13 twice. 13 twice on an 8k body with only one up. Eh. Yeah, you could still probably lose that way. Yeah, 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 yeah. If, if he had one more body on board and it was just broken to, to shambles, I think he probably could have gotten it. Oh, here we go. Four on two. I don't think it's four. All right, and uh, still, still protecting the new gate. I mean, the funny thing is, this is kind of like we've is what we said oh before. He did have it. See, yeah, put hey. all the dawn on it. <laughs> oh, he is. Okay, you know what? Is this a oh. new gate? Oh, I'd be so tempted to swing at the leader now. Yeah, maybe, maybe you're not big enough, but like to make it so like he wastes all his his cards defending a six k, and then you just do a big eight k to go for it. That's Giga Brain. Did he go game? I I am not. Sh no. Oh, now he's just. He got out. Oh, now he's just dead. <laughs> yeah, not being able to remove that new gate is so rough. Yeah, so we'll have to see. So. Going down there, and then, yeah, Newgate swing. There's no blockers on board either, yeah. And then, oh, casual. 19. Oh, yeah, yeah, there he it is. He can get to 20. He can get to 20. Show him all the 2Ks. Where's all the 2Ks? And the air. The 7 2Ks? In, in your trash. Well. Let me see if I can get... Um, 
Maybe we can get one of the game threes to move over here. Let me see. But yeah, we do have MacGyver taking it 2-0 over Law, which, you know, I, I was thinking that Law at least has a chance to go in second. I thought he'd win a game. Yeah. I thought he'd take a game. So top four, we've got a whole 59 minutes. Whole 59 minutes for both three. Should be enough time. All right, and they're going. All right, so we've seen Jonas only one on stream. We've seen MacGyver only one on stream. So, one's uh, gonna have to lose. Yes, yeah, so one one will lose. One will have to lose here. And you know, I've been saying like Jonas has been very strong. He went undefeated at our locals last night, six zero. Currently, he's what six one for this weekend or for today too. Yeah. Yeah. For the most part, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, we had five rounds, so he's five one, five one today right now. But he won. Top he won, eight, right? Yeah. Well, he went four one. Oh, so he's four one. And he then won top eight. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. So a combined what eleven and one between the two days? Yes. Yeah, so pretty strong. Yeah, pretty very, very record. solid. And uh, you know, he owns an all art leader, so that's also you know favor for him too. But MacGyver's been really like unstoppable. Like I, I've yet to see him like in a real pickle today. Yeah, I mean Newgate is a very good deck, and sure, it's not. I'm not saying the leader carries the game, and MacGyver's a great player. Yeah, yeah. But being a 6K helps a lot. Yeah, but you have to say that he's the only new gate in our top eight, right? Absolutely, and I yeah. agree with that. He's the only one. The only one who made it, and he has to play all these bad matchups. <laughs> <laughs> His words, not mine. Yeah, if he if he wins this, he's only gifted with another bad matchup. <laughs> yeah, with the same leader <laughs> twice. So uh, we go into there. It's brand new. Looking at the top three. Uh, top three for a navy card, and the rest go to the trash. Yeah, he. What did he get? Did he get a navy guy? I don't know. Okay. There's only two cards in the trash, so I'm gonna assume he got one. It's something which also those two cards are both CP9, so that's the dream. Pretty, that, that is the dream. That is like best outcome. You you had a hit, and the other two were CP9s. Brand new is really the card that the smoker decks were missing last set. Mm -hmm. uh, just a searcher to try and find what you're looking for helps out a lot in the most part. Yeah, so here. I'd, like, I think that uh, if, if it did have it last set, I think Smoke would probably be a little bit more represented than it was. Yeah. And you see Jonas here just dropping down the 4-6. Uh, going to be a very strong attacker in this matchup. Just going to obviously take a card each turn without having to devote too much Dawn to that swing. All right. And uh, playing with your Pirates. Probably trying to find a missing piece in the curve here. I mean... Uh, MacGyver did get to choose how he, he got to Shigi. Right. Thank you, chat. Thank you, chat. Appreciate it. Um, MacGyver did get to choose, so he obviously chose to go second. Mm -hmm. Probably the best in this matchup. But it also allows Jonas this curve of swing six on top of play a body that turn. Yeah, yeah. Which kind of works out in a way. You're getting at least one swing in, which is pitching a card, and then you're developing a body that will also keep swinging the next turns. So it's not the worst thing in the world. Uh, I still think you go second, though, mm -hmm. as Lucci for the most part. All right, 2K out, and then taking that 6K going down to 3. And, man, Ooh, that is a lot Atmos. of Atmos, yeah. Atmos is a big attacker for the most part. Just the vanilla 4-drop 6K. It has Slash, though, which means Buggy does not get KO'd. You know, the common Bye. card for Lucci. To <laughs> sneak in the Buggy. If he plays a Buggy, we're going to have some issues. Yeah, we are, yeah, like, hold up. Who allowed him to go this far with a Buggy in his deck? So yeah, at most, just a staple card for the Whitebeard Pirates kind of build of Whitebeard. Uh, obviously, slots into the 4-6. Man, this... It, at most makes it so frustrating because, like, you're, any, everything you're swinging into is a 6K most of the time. Unless yeah. it's, like, the 5-drop blocker... Or, sorry, the 5K blocker, Marco. Uh, you always have to attach Dawn if you want to do anything. Yeah. So, let's see here. If... Jonas has a way to kind of get rid of one of these Atmoses through like a KO effect with like Kaku or Sakazuki. It's going to help mm -hmm. out really big here. Yeah. And yeah, so he's got what, seven Dawn right now? Yeah. So Sakazuki 6K swing is a possibility. If he wants to try and get another card out of MacGyver's hand, 
potentially if he does, he can then put the Sakazuki in the other one. Mm -hmm. Alright, 6k, yep, getting a 2k out of hand, that's nice. Here's like the thing about like 2k out of a, you know, going from 6 to 8 is that even in like regular decks, you'd have to get a 2k to get out of these swings, right? Right. So like it, it doesn't even feel that bad when you, you do it as, as new gate. If I'm Jonas, I'm trying to find either a Kuzan to play this turn. Uh, the 4 drop Kuzan is very good. Yep. There, there it is. is. Yep. Oh, he had to get rid of a Sakazuki and a, I think that's another Kumadori. Yep, Kumadori, yeah. Yeah. The Kuzan is actually going to help out a lot here. He could swing the Kuzan at lead for six and then reduce the cost of one of these cards to zero and then potentially play um, the Kaku to go with it. But four drop Kuzan, automatically a four of in almost every black deck at the moment. Just one of the strongest mid-range cards, I would say. Replaces itself. It's a 5k body. And that has a relevant effect for the most part. Mm-hmm. Here you go, Ace here, going to reduce the or reduce the power of the Kumadori and the Kuzan. Yeah, Just trying to clear that board up. Yeah, and, and new gates aren't usually playing Sea Quakes, which is a shame because it can like, be a good kind of matchup kind of swinger, but um, I think that Kuzan is probably just going to hang around for a bit still. On some just very quick swings. Yeah, Jonas recognizing that he is going to take a 7k swing right afterward. He has to... Um, counter under these early ones to kind of mediate that damage from the 7k swinging through. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, this is a, uh, this is best of three too. So, uh, you know, this, this will be not just one and done. And, uh, you know, Chad was also asking, what's, what's the Lucci's worst matchup? I think, I think yellow can be pretty bad for you a lot of the time, but what, what do you think is the worst matchup for, for Lucci? I would say Lucci's worst matchup is probably going to be either yellow law also. It's the same thing with like, um, how law builds its entire board up and really the decks that can beat that kind of strategy easily are decks that have access to mass board removal mm -hmm. so like purple during set one with the kings and the kaidos basically mass board wipes stopping that and red right now zoro having access to fire fist as well as marcos to clear the way those are going to be a lot harder for Luchi because Luchi's a lot of single target removal mm -hmm. and law's trying to build a massive board quickly yeah yeah so. yeah and then yellow just plays a lot of bigger bodies that can mediate the game as well as remove a lot of these one bodies that the Luchi deck plays. Yeah, I think yellow is probably has a better end game. But if you like yellow is also, I think, really susceptible to I show or E show, um, which uh, I, I think Jonas only plays two. I know some people try to sneak in a third one sometimes, but that that card can be just a definitely equalizer, especially in the new gate matchup as well. Yeah. And here you go, Jonas here utilizing the leader's effect. He was able to get a KO off the Kaku and re-stand the leader to get two 8k swings at the utmost. Mm -hmm. Which, MacGyver can't discard that many cards. I think it's two cards per swing. Mm -hmm. So, he definitely got a lot of value here by discarding the two cards. And I think he discarded like an Isho and a Kuzan. So, Brick's in his hand right now. Yeah, that's like the best thing. Like, two card discard is pretty costly, all things considered. Ooh. A two card discard here for Jonas going into the new gate. And that'll get rid of the Kuzan. And unlike a lot of these decks prior, you had um, Kuzan being a very great tool against the nine cost. Mm -hmm. um, helping reduce the cost and then sakazuki to clear it is very good or going into their own 10 drop Kuzan. Yeah. We don't have that type of late game card anymore that uh, the Smoker decks had last set. Luchi's more of a cap out at maybe six Dawn for the Sakazuki and that's it. Not much more to go off of that. So here you just see him swinging at the Atmos here, trying to get as many cards out of his hand as possible. Yep, 6k again into the Atmos. Again, just trying to get all the cards out of MacGyver's hand so that a lethal swing can be set up properly for the next turn. Yeah, this is kind of like what we, we've been saying this a lot. Like, if you swing with something, anything smaller than Newgate after you play the 9 drop, it's just going to eat away at that board. Yeah, it's just deciding to get that Atmos out of there. All right, and then, uh, ooh, two ooh. blockers. Yeah. Jonas was able to establish the Fukuro, which is a un, it's an unkillable or unkillable card in this matchup. It just 
can block whenever it needs to. It can't be hit by any of the effects. And then you have Blue Uno also, where if it does get hit by effects, he can bring back a Kumadori afterward, or any CP9 from his trash will cost four or less rested. And I think he's got pretty much all of them, right? He's yeah. got Kumadori. He's got um, Khalifa. Khalifa too, which can be a draw two, discard two. If you and just have I a think really, it'd just be bringing back a Kumadori to apply more pressure. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And also, this blue now, if it doesn't, if it doesn't get KO'd during this turn, it becomes an attacker. Yes. That's why two dawn be making an AK swing. Yeah, and then like it's it's just like an attacker that you don't even want to attack and do kind of like Marco is, right? Yeah. Interesting. What do you think MacGyver is searching for with that Wipers Pirates? I think if he gets another eight, uh, nine drop, he's set up pretty well here because mm -hmm. the only other thing that's tapped is going to be another nine drop. Sure. So it's already kind of hard to remove. Um, he might be looking for also Marcos. Marcos mm -hmm. are very good too, the blockers, uh, to pretty much just stop some early aggression. Although with this Luchi Leader, you can't just play a blocker anymore. You have to have at least two, mm -hmm. or they're just going to go 15 and twice. 15, block gets KO'd, discard two cards, restand, go ahead. Yeah, okay, yeah, another one. And yeah, it's going to eat up here, this blue and O, which is then going to bring back, I wouldn't mind bringing back the Fukuro here, the blocker. Yeah, this looks like the case, yeah. Because there's no more attacks on it. Mm -hmm. We only have two cards in hand. But you still have two cards in life, this new gate, that's... Very healthy for this late in the game, right? Well, now we could just try and get rid of the new gate on the board, mm -hmm. which is probably the biggest priority for Jonas, at least. Get rid of one of them, have the blocker up for the other one. You could also, I mean, you're Luchi. Put 10 down underneath it, swing, and then oh, if they yeah. get out of it, just discard two, try it again. Well, if they get out of it, then you can't discard two. You don't KO a card. Oh, that's true. That's true. Yeah, that was, sorry. If you could do K, you're right. You're right. Yeah. If it was if this character attacked a character, yeah, yeah, yeah. we stand at them pretty broken. Yeah, maybe uh, maybe there'd be more reason why there's four in yeah, there. Yeah, I like this play a lot here. Just the dump all of it on the leader here. This is a 13k swing at the mm -hmm. new gate. This would put MacGyver on 2k, 2k in hand. Ooh. Yeah, it has it. All right, so maybe has a shockwave in hand, but uh, it's probably passing from there. We're probably okay this next turn if we have shockwave. Yeah, one blocker up to yeah. Passing. Yeah, we're probably and at this point, MacGyver has I think one two cards in hand. Yeah. So pushing for lethal might be actual reality this next turn. Yeah, and I, I think that's why like Lucci has a bit of an edge in this matchup is because it's not as phased by other leaders by a single marker. They need to establish at least two for you to you know properly stop them. Yeah, absolutely here, and it's really hard for MacGyver. He has to try and. Figure a way to either win this turn or potentially lose the next turn. Yeah. And I don't think a blocker can get him there because we just swing big with leader because we could do the math. We just need to swing 10 with it to connect because rad beam only gives us two up to 10. So it's a really close game. All right. Swinging the new gate in. Taking that one. Going down to one life for Jonas. I think you have to counter out of the swing or block it. Yep, and it did block it. Newgate number three. I think we lose if he plays Newgate number three. Who's we? Uh, MacGyver. Okay, okay. Sorry, <laughs> I, I have to clarify. My bad. Yeah, okay. Resident Newgate play. I guess that's not too too un, you know far fetched. Not too uncommon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't think Newgate can win here if he plays a second one. Actually, if you play a third one, it's very hard to get through. Yeah, so I think this is a probably about a 9k swing here. Yeah. Do you think if he takes that, he just dumps all of it on Izo and goes in? I mean, not without a Makino in hand. Which he did just counter out with, so... Yeah, chances of having a Makino are slim to none. Slim to some. <laughs> slim to some, that's a good point. <laughs> uh, let's see, if that was a... I think that was a 7k swing. I think there's too much Dawn for that to be a 9k swing. Perhaps. Okay. And uh, as Jonas said, zero life right now. Playing Marco to get out of it. But again, that Marco does very little. Uh, it doesn't is not as impactful with Rob Lucci on that other side. So now that we have this position...
How do you think we approach this? I think it's just a 10k swing with leader. Yeah, because you want to swing with leader first. Because if they block their first attack, you can't restand with it anymore. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like Jonas agrees. Going to uh, 10 with leader into the new gate. Because if he somehow gets out of the swing with, um, like, rad beam, it has to be exactly rad beam and a 1k. Mm -hmm. So you put your opponent on not having to break in hand. Oh, even if, okay, so if they rad beam, if they rad beam and, uh, okay, they're taking it. Now, my issue with putting the rest of the Dawn on the Kaku is if we go 11, but I think this is our only play. I think we're yeah, just yeah. losing next turn, so yeah. And if he counters out of this, then yeah, he just twelve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And just scoops it up. Uh, right. So MacGyver yeah, got that one. Okay. Yeah, yeah. MacGyver won. I was making sure he just had enough in there. Yeah. So yeah, he ended up taking that game one. So there may have been like a. Uh, do you think there's anything to put like three underneath the? Yeah, there's no. There, yeah, yeah. You'd have to be four for the. For the brand you new. can swing minimums. The issue is, is that since he had the 2k, he just counters out of one of them. Yeah. And then Rad Beam's the second one. For sure. So, yeah. And this is uh, this is best of three for our, for our top cut here. So, 50 minutes for game one. Not too bad. Uh, I'm pretty sure they're still playing game one on, on the other side of the table there for uh, our, our Luchi Mirror match. So, we'll have to see. But they're they're in the same room. We might, we might be able to kind of shift them over if this match ends. But we'll see. Yeah. That was a very good match, I think, for the first time, and Jonas did a very good job of going first. Mm -hmm. It just came down to the end there, those last little cards in the life. Yeah, yeah. I think the double Newgate is super hard to get through. It is. Especially if you can't clear one of them, it is very hard to push through. So I think on this next turn, when Jonas is going second, it'll be a lot easier. He can hold up that Kuzan longer, so mm -hmm. it just doesn't have to attack. And he can generate, you know, a turn of, he plays Newgate, swing Kuzan, plays Akazuki afterward, get rid of it. Yeah, no, that's that's one of his favorite plays that you know I've I've talked to him about it too, and he's he's like yeah the 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 amount of you know good momentum that the Kuzan can get me and then just removal is is unparalleled. Yeah, so I'll assume here that uh, Jonas wants to go second for this second game. Mm -hmm. All right, presenting the deck. And we're over there, yeah. But yeah, I, I would assume that Rob Lucci would like to go second. Not only is it better on your own curve, but using the effects of uh, like Newgate against himself for going first too is, I think, very strong. Yeah. Very very strong. All right, and drawing five apiece. And let's see if they like it. Yeah, Jonas not liking his hand. MacGyver is A-OK -okay putting down his 6 life. Yeah, and Jonas is typically going to be looking for here either a Kuzan in the hand or a brand new to kind of get towards that Kuzan. Yeah. he really wants to play that card turn two. I think that's what he strives for in this matchup is mm -hmm. just play that card as soon as possible, have it there so that way I can swing, lower the cost and then KO it, get it off the board whenever I want type of deal. Yeah, yeah good cards in, in this is uh, brand new, obviously playing it on your first turn, and then a four drop such as Borsalino or Kuzan, we've been saying, uh, like some uh, like Fukuru is kind of okay on like the other turn, but that yeah. is there. So it looks like we're starting us off, and uh, MacGyver is going to be going first. Not not very surprising there. Oh, but did get the Izo, and uh, if they kept their opening hand, then you know that's probably a good chance that, that was in there. All right, and uh, with two, yeah, playing. Okay, we both found our searchers. Yep. So Jonas here, if he already has a Kuzan in hand, which I can't really tell, um, probably going to try and grab either a 2k counter or maybe a Sakazuki. And yep, he had grabbed a 2k instead of... The Kuzan, yeah, so yeah, it has so to have had one in hand. Yeah. Sometimes it's just beneficial to grab two of them just to have them. But yep. We'll wait and see here. And oh, yep, yeah, 5k Izo. Yeah, this is good pressure from uh, MacGyver here, just making sure that he can get through. Swinging the six afterward. 
Yeah, and, and for this event, too, we had uh, 44 players. We did five rounds of Swiss into a top eight cut that we see here. So uh, round one, we saw MacGyver beat uh, our, our Zor uh, one of our law players, and now it's uh, Rob Lucci versus Newgate. Yeah. So you see here the power of that searcher, just clearing the Izo and then having enough to play the Kuzan as well. So not having to use the leader swing, which wouldn't have really mattered. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I might have favored the leader swing just to have the brand new untapped, but... Yeah, I yeah. If you weren't, up, he's not very turning sideways at the leader. We're not getting, we're not putting three Don the brand new and having go six at lead. Yeah, and they they're probably gonna play Marco anyways. So, which could have gotten the pop anyways. He did not actually. He searched. Let's see. So he's at four Don, so he's playing an Atmos. Yeah. Also, as far as I know, the Jonas's list is the exact same one he that I put on my channel today. I asked him last night if he's changing, and he said no. And he's a Usually a pretty honest guy, so. <laughs> I don't see a reason why he would be dishonest. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> There's a spandum. And spandum grabs any CP, uh, CP9 card, I believe. Or is it just any CP card? Um... Because I know that there's like CP zeros and CP sixes and stuff like that. Yeah, let me let me look it up. I believe it's an CP nine. Yeah, uh, it was CP with in CP. its type. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You yeah, also have to have CP in your leader type to use the card. Which again, like I don't know why like they they make the the searches for black so specific, right? Like yeah. spandum, like spandum kind of makes sense because you want to be filling your drop your trash anyways. But like brand new, especially because it costs two. There's no way it should only be top three. And unless, like, Smoker and, like, our Navy stuff gets better with stuff in your trash, he's just, it's just a little middling. Yeah, I just think that brand new is, like, the most specific searcher, right? It's like, you don't, you can play any black deck. Yeah. And it has value regardless. Yeah. And yeah, Jonas, uh, Jonas did get a fifth place finish on one of the online regionals in OPO2 with Smoker. Yeah, it was a treasure cup. A treasure cup, sorry, with a treasure cup. So, um, yeah, but so definitely, definitely been playing a lot of this One Piece card game. He has had a lot of fun too. I've talked with him. He comes from other card games, and he said this one's by far his favorite to play. So. Yeah. But he's he's yearning for a you know a Nats invite for sure. I'm I'm sure he is like that. Yeah. And he deserves one. Like when I see him play, he definitely. Oh, yeah. He's got a lot. He's got a lot going for him. So hopefully Lucci is able to to get him that. So yep. Now it's safe to swing this Kuzan just because um, we have the blue and no there to kind of block any bigger swings. Oh, we're just turning the blue now sideways. Okay. I guess we're playing Sakazuki this turn or something. To try to push through. We have seven Don. Playing a six cost or are we playing a five cost card? Uh, well, we've got well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven Dawn open. So, you know, five cost into uh, Shockwave, Shockwave would be kind of, you know, oh, okay, just uh, six then. Why not? Gets two life to two life right now. Okay, getting a Machino out of hand. Nice. Oh, playing a five cost. Oh, another Blue No. Oh, that's so sick. Yeah, that's definitely going to be a very good turn here for Jonas for the most part. Yeah, that that card is very like one of them's already good on board. Now, now that you have like these two, like either they're blockers or they can be six K swings, which again trade very good into Newgate, and then you don't want to get rid of them either. Yeah. You definitely want them to stay there for the majority of the. Uh... I mean, as the Newgate player, it's hard to justify getting rid of one of those because he's just going to get a Kumadori out and play the Kumadori. Or he's going to get Khalifa, maybe do that. So he's a Fukuro and a Khalifa there. Yep. That Kuzan sticks around, which means this new gate is probably not sticking around for long. He's debating on what he wants to bring back with the effect. Yeah, it looks like a blocker is the the choice there. 
because it could have been yeah it could have been any of the other cards right could have been Khalifa could have been the Kumidori or the even the Spandam I think definitely not Spandam though right Spandam <laughs> feels very bad to bring back yep now I'm going to assume that Jonas has some kind of removal here for this new gate in the form of either uh, probably Sakazuki would be your cleanest form right yeah because you could uh, Kuzan reduce the cost and then Sakazuki to get rid of it because yeah. you wouldn't you know do that as much right oh maybe we don't have an out. And MacGyver has a lot more cards in hand now than before. So this is pretty tough here. Wow. Okay. And going down to one. I think MacGyver might have a second nine cost. Uh, he did first game. It looked like they went their way, right? I think typically, yeah. Usually if you take the one of the lives... When you're playing Newgate, uh, typically you have a second one. It's because you know you're not going to take any of the next turn. So yeah. And this game went from pretty good for Jonas to now. Uh, uh, all right. Eh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Two Newgates is two Newgates. That's true. Eh, every deck fears that. Yeah. Now you can't even swing with Kuzan to even pressure the leader, right? Because you need. Uh, that's not true. You can do an 8K and then still have enough to Sakazuki, right? Sakazuki then have one for Bluno underneath it. That's fair. That, I mean, that has to be the play, I feel. No. Just. 12 lead's pretty strong, too. Yeah, but yeah, my, he's got such an accordion in that hand. We have to dwindle it somehow. Yeah, because there's like, what, like 10 cards in there? Yeah. We're only getting like two cards from the swing, from the 7k, because uh, it's just Rad Beam plus a 1k. So, any more than that, we're probably happy. 10k is 11. And where are we swinging? Lead? Yeah. Still only two cards if he has guard point. Or that. Or just a single card, yeah. And then uh, Fukuru for three. Yep. Yeah. This is fine, but yeah, it's it's sli definitely slipping away for Jonas. And if MacGyver has Ace, it's not looking great. Because mm -mm. the Ace can shrink the blue no down to make it a 3k. We can attach it onto a new gate. Swing 12 at lead. Or we could just have a third new gate. Yeah, that's that's three of the boys. You gotta bring, uh, you gotta bring Bruce back out here. Yeah. <laughs> You're on the board four times. <laughs> it's like an iconic picture of one of the employees at Olympus where he just has four new gates out against somebody who has two eight yeah. kids out. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> uh, I've seen that one. It's very funny. What are we bringing back? The okay. boy. Yeah. It's fair. I mean, that that is super nice, right? You got a block, block, bring back the first blocker. But again, that's that's three whole new gates. Yeah. And I don't see a way how Jonas can try and get through here. Three new gates is three new gates. Yes, and that is exactly what they are. And yeah, MacGyver, I don't think has played any Marcos in this entire match. I don't think he needs to. Yeah. Oh no, he did play one four cost in the first game. Okay. Did he? <sighs> yeah, he did. He did played one. He played one yeah, at yeah. the end. Maybe two. He didn't play any of the five drops. That was that was the card I was more thinking of, but just never made sense. All right, yeah, for another Fukuru, third Fukuru, uh, Borsellino. Sure. Yeah. Even even so, though. Yeah, I think when we talked to MacGyver, I think he said he only had three in this deck. Oh, there they are. There they are. <laughs> Full power right here. Well, hopefully he didn't say he had two in his deck, because uh, those are three. That is three cards. If he plays the fourth one, we're going to have some issues. Yeah, but yeah, I don't think you need to run four new gates anymore, especially since you have way more options to search it, if you really need it, from uh, Eyes Ope and just more people playing the Whitebeard Pirates event card anyways. he's There's a lot more access to him. What are we digging for here? Probably a Marco blocker? Yeah, I would have think so. 
you'd think we'd already have one in the accordion of a hand. Yeah, I I would yeah think so as well. Yeah, so definitely definitely thinking about it. okay playing Atmos. So no no blocker. Uh, there might be one in hand, but I think he got an Atmos off the. Yeah, off the. He, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's not playing that card. No, that'd be that'd be. That'd be BM. Not good. Although he should just play Otama and pass because mm -hmm. chances of losing are small. <laughs> and then you, you can Machino. Uh huh. Man, I wish you were less predictable. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do what I did. Don't just attach yeah. second dot to Machino and lose. Yeah. Man, but if you won with it, though, oh, imagine, okay. legend, oh, yeah. clip that every time. Oh, yeah. But I'm playing Zoro, so That's true. I'm the villain of this game. <laughs> All right, so, yeah, Newgate wraps it up, but, uh... Oh? 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 There's no way 15k gets it, right? That's his only out. Think 15k I, I do not think so. Think so. Oh, I show? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he thought he was going to I show. I did. It's 14. Uh, there's 14 in the area. There it whoa, is. Oh, 6k? Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, yeah. <laughs> okay, there it is. All right, MacGyver takes it. MacGyver takes it. In a quick 30. There we go. In a quick 30. All right, well, I uh, hope you liked that matchup. It looked like it went his way, but... Uh, yeah, it's uh, it definitely did. For yeah, sure. but he's he's got to know that it's waiting for him in the finals as well now too, right? Oh yeah. But we are here in our finals. It is going to be a Newgate versus Rob Lucci. Uh, the Newgate, unsurprising. Rob Lucci, depending on who you ask, very surprising. Ah, I'm not as surprised. <laughs> 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 I kind of thought that there would be most Lucci dominant lists here. The uh, and Newgate is a surprise though. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, that's known because, you know, we've seen three – there are three Luchis in the top eight, and all of them won their first round. So, very strong there. And uh, and these on. players have taken no time. MacGyver having the best turn two in the deck, at most. And Clay having his best turn two play, but on turn three because he's going first. Yeah. Uh, the Kuzan here. Very good. Yeah. I'm going to guess these guys are going to be playing pretty fast. Ooh. Ooh. It's a rush Luffy. That is a rush Luffy. That's a I would say tech for MacGyver. A lot of people have taken this out of their their new gate builds, but MacGyver has kept it in. And against something like Black, where they like to put up a bunch of like Borsalino blockers and everything, or even just on, play on turn five and just swing in, very strong. Yeah, I think when we were talking to MacGyver earlier, he said he really enjoyed the five cost in the deck because of the rush factor as well as being able to get through these blockers, especially in this deck alone. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it, there's just so much potential for it to like cheese you a win every once in a while too, just because, you know, Trafalgar Law, they'll go down to zero because they know, oh, I've got three blockers up, and then boom, Rush Luffy comes in, game over. And there we go. Clay doing a typical play here, swinging six, probably at the utmost, trying to clear it with the Kuzan, and then the leader swing afterward. Yeah. And then following it up with a Kaku to play right afterward. Yeah, Kuzan into Kaku feels so good. Yeah. It's such a good combo. I think that this was the one card that Black needed the most. It's the main form of removal they have that doesn't require loss of hand size. Yes. Yeah. Before, as Black, every single one of the cards you play that removes something costs you a card in hand every time. Yes, it would. Sakazuki, discard one. Kobe, discard one. But now you have this Kaku that just says, place two from your discard on the bottom of your deck, which means that you can counter out swings earlier and then use those CP9s to then place on the bottom of the deck, KO something. Generates a lot of value going forward. MacGyver dropping that ace as well. Good on Clay to let the um, Kuzan to die earlier. Mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. way we don't lose a lot of cards in hand. Nice to find a way to deal with this card. Uh, it's going to start with a 6k swing probably into... Probably Atmos, to be honest. But, uh, okay, Kuzan there to get rid of the Atmos. So, or Sakazuki. Uh, Sakazuki, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Pitch a Sakazuki and play a Fukuro afterward. Probably prepping for this nine beard turn that's probably going to come down right now. Yeah, Sakazuki was the premier form of removal for most black decks during set two. Yeah. 
He's very good at what he does. There it is. All right. And MacGyver here using a uh, Wipe Your Pirates to try and find a card. Not too certain what he got. Yeah, but he's at one, two, three. Okay, he's at ten dollars. So, assume a new game. Yeah. So I, I guess just doesn't have like the radical beam or, or anything in hand, which is a little bit scary, right? Um, uh, you know, man, we we still haven't really seen Marcos from uh, from MacGyver in a long time. Yeah, I think he played them in round one. Yes. And then never again. He got white beard. Okay, thank you, Mav. Sorry, uh, my my card art image system was done for the day. Needed to be a little, a little waking up. Yeah. Here you see a 10k swing, presumably at leader. Yep. Yeah. All right, getting a 2k and 1k out. Playing a blue no for five, and then you should be able to have the extra dawn to attach. But I don't think he has a dawn here to hold up the uh, shockwave anand. Mm-hmm. All right, yeah, keeping only one open, so probably should have put one more. Like if you know, it's it's really difficult to kind of gauge that because you you know the good numbers, but uh, yeah, one more on that uh that Sakazuki might have made a difference, or at least you know made him discard one more card, right? All right, so ten dawn again, one life for Newgate. Izo looking at top five, we're trying to find another Newgate perhaps. Uh, no, that's Jozu. Jozu. Probably the next best thing, right? Yeah. I mean, there's, you know, it's. I don't think MacGyver could push for a game right now in any sense of it. So, uh, with one blocker and two health left for Clay, a little bit tough. All right, seven K into leader, seven to five. Going down to one life for Clay. All right, swing in there. I believe this is uh, 8K. So taking it there. New gate swing going in. So zero life for Clay. Presumably, you're just going to get a block here, right? Yeah, yeah, I doubt you can get out of it. So you can do a block here, and then you can bring back... What do we got? A Fukuro, probably. Yeah, I don't think we actually have a, a really good target outside of the Fukuro. I mean, the Fukuro is nice, but it's not It's not going to be pressuring as much. Yep. Here's that Marco, though we've been missing all day. Yeah, he's, he's finally found it. So... Um, again, Marco does a little bit less in this matchup because you can just put uh, 15 underneath your your Rob Lucci and, and then swing twice with it. Is this a 15-15 angle? I think so. I mean, then you can like get a 7K swing, 7K afterwards. swing afterwards. He has and, two Dawn open. There's no way this goes through, right? Uh, I mean, with two Radical Beams, it puts you at 14 and then you put two underneath it, right? Yes, it's three cards out of hand. Yeah, and how many cards are in hand right now? Because then if you have like two 4K, if two Rad Beams and two 2Ks beats that match pretty good. It's more than three cards. The minimum is four cards. And then... I don't remember, it was three cards, right? Rad Beam, Rad Beam, 2K? Rad Beam, Rad Beam, 2K. And then, but then also you have to get out of the the Sakazuki swing because you can't just block it because you get the Luchi again. Right, 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 right. Oh, looks like he's doing that. Looks like it's 14 at lead. So you can go 14-8. Yeah, so discard two. And uh, going again. Left me off the crazy ride. Rad beam. Rad beam, 2K, sick. And then eight, and uh, yeah, two 2Ks. And uh, that is it. MacGyver takes game one. It's going to be... One more game he needs to win for the rest of the day. He's been wholly undefeated. 
Yeah. I don't think he's even lost a game in top eight. Yeah, I think he just two out both of them. He two out both of them. He's he's yet to drop a game today in the last eight hours. That is insane. That is very very good. That is very very strong. Newgate is the new villain of this set again. Yeah. <laughs> again, by the yeah. way, being the key words. The new villain is take off the cape. Me still. <laughs> it's been me all along. <gasps> Yeah, so but all serious though, I think Lucci did very good today. Yes. And I think it actually is a contentful deck. Yeah. I just don't know how it's a bad match for Whitebeard. I yeah, right. Whitebeard said it was one of his worst matchups, but I don't he's cooked all of he's them. He's been he's been cooking them and like <laughs> I could say like maybe he's just playing it different. Maybe I like I, I think it might just be an adjustment of how to play against Rob Lucci. Because a lot of the time it's just, you know, you, you just hunker down on your Marco blockers and, and pray and that's not as viable for, for this matchup. Yeah, I also think the main thing here is that neither player was able to deal with the nine good robs. Yes. I feel like if there was a way to deal with them, the match becomes a little bit harder. Yeah, because we were talking to Jonas, because he, he was on stream previously against MacGyver, and um, he's like, yeah, I have the Kuzon set up, I have everything, but I just couldn't find my Sakazuki, and because of that, I wasn't able to to get rid of the, the new gate easily. And I, I think I agree. Like, if, he's a, he, if he was able to do that, he'd be in a way different spot. Okay, yeah, fixing which, which card is technically bottom life and, and top, so... For people who don't know, the top card of your deck is the bottom card of your life. Which, now that we have yellow and now that we have all these triggers, it kind of, it's momentarily adding up, right? I just set them out one by one. Yeah. Which is wrong, but <laughs> the way you said it, the top card of your life is the the last card in your deck. Right, you're saying... Yeah, yeah, so you, you take one, boop, two, boop, three, boop. Oh, that's So you do, it, you do it yeah, correctly, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. Most people who just like take five and like sp spray them out, that's technically upside down. Yeah. I don't know how to feel about those people. <laughs> I start talking to to them now. Yeah, yeah. No, I if if the player's newer, I'll be like, hey, by the way, if they're set in their ways, I'm like, I'm gonna let them know, but they're not gonna change it. Like, it's still technically randomized. It's not like a super big deal, but like, the like the top card and your bottom card switching in in life can just change the entire match. All right, well, MacGyver's playing a lot more aggressive this game. Yeah, I think he was that two open there. He was really trying to punish Clay for mm -hmm. using that, uh, holding that two open for that um, shockwave. shockwave. Yeah, yeah. Did he just untap his leader? <laughs> he untapped his swing again because mm -hmm. 6K base. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. But he did establish your Kuzan again. That can be uh, pretty strong if you have an option to uh, out their their new gate. So something at lead here. All right, and there's an Atmos for four and passing it back. Life is three to three, I believe, or three to four. Three to four. Three to four. All right, swing with the Kuzan. Maybe he's just trying to get this Kaku down. Oh, oh he's just, just have another Kuzan. Kuzan. Yeah, that's fair. Best card in the matchup. Yeah. It's surprising just how much Kobe isn't played anymore. At least in in a, in a black as much. I mean, I guess it's more for Smoker, right? You have like better trade potential with it, but it's just not worth it most of the time. Somebody in chat said they all got gaslit into saying that it's bad. White beard. Yeah, dang. It's because they have to play against me at locals. And I play Zoro, so Zoro's like pretty good in the white beard. Turns out. All right, and oh, ooh. an e show. Something we haven't seen all day, all day. from Rob Lucci. Not a single time. You yeah. even queued the card up here. I did. I was I was ready for it, and then they didn't play it, so. I'm all ready for it. 
he finally got to ask him how many cards in hand. Yeah. Oh, no, no. Yeah, that, that is a Whitebeard killer. If you play it on curve, yeah. Oh, we got a Marco and something else out. Uh, he pitched off of it a Jozu and a Whitebeard. Whitebeard, okay. Yeah, that, that Whitebeard's usually pretty good, but maybe he's got another one in hand. Clay has another Isho in hand. Oh, man. Being able to resolve <laughs> two. Oh, he had another Newgate anyways. Oh, don't worry. This is. Ask him again. Ask him again. <laughs> Same question. I actually don't think MacGyver has that many cards in hand. I don't think so either. I don't think he meets the threshold. Just <laughs> tapping the table. Yeah. There. Oh man, I I don't I don't know how people do that like that. Where where the math comes in for those guys? I feel like in grade school they did that where they're just like tapping the table during their test to like figure out their times tables or whatever. Maybe like I could see like I don't know. It is it is not a a circuit that my my brain goes down. So, all right, swinging with the uh, s uh, the Kuzan, getting the minus on the the new gate, and probably swing into what I guess the Luffy, right? Ooh, since we have uh, the Isho out, we can actually minus three cost of the new gate again, making it a two cost, and Kaku can then get rid of it. That's true. It's pretty good. Yeah, Isro once it's once it's doing stuff, it gets really good. Uh, all right, six K with Luchi into Atmos, which I like here too. All right, and again, there's only yeah, there's only four cards in MacGyver's hand. So yeah, the C show is not doing a lot, but no. that E show is going to swing ten at that Atmos. Yeah, so I mean, there's we're going six right now, so yet deciding to why not? So it's going to go eight into lead instead, or ten into lead instead, or ten. It's going to go quite a quite a few. A lot of numbers. A non-zero amount. <sighs> Not this again. You started it. Uh, I said it one time. You said it one time, and then you kept saying it. <laughs> non-zero. You've said it a non-zero amount of times. <laughs> All right, and yeah, there's that Kaku. Very, very strong. It's usually, you know, since it's already like free investment to get all those uh, that minus cost there. I think I think this is Clay's you know, good game, right? Yeah. I showed or Isho to uh uh no, sorry that yeah, Isho to get rid of two cards in hand as well as getting rid of the new gate after you play it. And uh I, yeah, it's just very, very poor. Very poor for Whitebeard. Not that it not his own fault, but it's just it's how it is. This will be the first game that MacGyver drops all day. Dude. Maybe. 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 Every time I say that, the other person wins, so I'm just not gonna They're say like it. they hear you, you're like what? Like, Make it close? Yeah, okay. okay. <laughs> Finish it in five minutes? Gotcha. I wonder what they're doing here. I think he's tanking this uh, this one cost event. Uh, Probably just grabs a Marco, right? Yeah. Oh, okay, I think just they scoop just both it up. Showed each other's hands. Like, yeah, there's no way. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. So Clay takes game two, the first game that uh, MacGyver's lost all day. And I will say, like, a lot had to go right for Clay on that one. Being able to go second, being able to play Ice Show and Curve, and then being able to already have Kuzon established to be able to get rid of the New Gate. Uh, just a lot in his way. So, uh, you know, we did force a game number three, but I it's going to be, I think, in MacGyver's favor for this next one. At least being able to choose who goes, or, you know, being able to go second and whatnot. It is going to be hard. Definitely for sure. All right. And so, yeah, so we're going to go into this final game of the final round here in the Talking Stick Resort. Recording studio at the Legacy Sports Arena in Mesa, Arizona. I've yeah, hit my curve. Like, I've got it back. You know, it's gonna be funny. Is like someone's gonna like you're gonna upload this video to YouTube. And you're yeah. just gonna be like somebody's gonna complex. It's the Legacy Complex. Oh arena. my gosh, please. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you messed it up so many times. But it, but you know what it is, right? 
Yeah. I don't, actually. All right. If we want to be technical, because I looked it up, it's Legacy Park, Arizona's premier sports and entertainment complex. So I, I a little, a little, that, that, I would, I'd have to read that off a card. That's no fun. You guys know what I'm talking could about. could just had a little card, like, right there. Uh, just... Nah. People don't know what you're pointing to. Just pointing at the ceiling. I can't read that card up there. And welcome to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Eggman put out his back. He has to look up. It's terrible. <laughs> Every time. Every time. Every time. Every time. But we've got our final game here. Everything's set up. We have Rob Leach going first. Oh, despite... he opened up his turn one play. Okay, he's got it. Looking at top three, getting a uh... – oh, that's that's a pretty good hit. Already that setting is. up your CP9s. Have a uh... – I believe he added a – blue note a hand I, yeah. I missed it real quick it's but blue now there it is uh but we both players finding their searches we have iso looking at the top five finding a thatch that's pretty good here that thatch. if you establish it, it it's pretty strong it fills the spot of a five cost card it's like on your six dawn turn you can yep. just play thatch it's like an ak body against black it's not too good yeah, because then they, they do have some ways yeah. to get rid of it. Yeah. Ooh, oh, getting the eye oh. show. Yeah, all right. And the unfortunate thing is, like, Newgate can't actually get cards of their hand very easily, right? They have to usually make some bad trades or... Oh, they could totally overcome. Oh. <laughs> they could totally pitch, like, five cards. Okay, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right, yeah. yeah, you're pitching five cards to prevent you from pitching two cards. Seems good. It's a value trade. It, a value two trade. two cards are random. Yeah. I yeah. get to choose the cards. Okay. I bet you now, because I said that, so many people are just going to be like, oh, value discard four cards. Yeah. <laughs> so I'd have to discard two. Yeah, no, nobody should do that. No, please don't. Uh, please don't do that. Or if you do, blame Nico. If you do, do not blame me for your loss at a regional. Yeah. His DMs are open. <laughs> They're not. <laughs> <laughs> All of my DMs are closed. <laughs> yeah, so... He's got the Kuzan down. That's pretty good. Yeah, Kuzan is pretty <laughs> good, yeah. Just go straight to back two. Kuzan on the board. Let's Kuzan go. board, yeah. Ooh, wait. this Atmos swinging seven. Kuzan? No, wait, 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 wait. Kuzan. Kuzan. Uh, Kuzan first. This is on. There it is. Seven out lead. He's not going to play a thatch. He's just not going to play thatch. Yeah, you could. But with Kuzan, you don't. Uh, he actually can't. Oh, because, uh, oh, because you used the Dawn, and now you can't no more? Seems that up, but I left too open. I wonder if he's playing Red Hawk in his deck. I don't think he is. You know, he's been undefeated all day. We don't know. What That's he's true. Playing. We have and we have no way to find out. Yeah. Does he not have eight Don? Is he at seven right now? He should be at. S I guess he's at seven. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. 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 All right, attacking yeah, that's lead. Dawn. That's yeah. Dawn, yeah. The light blinds me every time. It does. Now he's going to play this. Boop. Yeah, Kaku, get rid of the Atmos. Get rid of that guy. It's, it's a lot of momentum for Clay. But all it takes is just a few new gates here to ruin it. Yeah. But he does have Isho. He does. Because <laughs> you can you can new gate on curve right now if you want to. Because you're at nine. All right, he's at... Oh, sorry. He's at he's, he's at, at eight. Yeah, yeah, eight right yeah. You can't do that. You're right. He could play the legendary thatch. Yeah, or, or he could uh, do this. ace. All right, Izo. Oh, not the, not the Izo. The Izo. You know you. You have to say <laughs> We man. got him. It's we Ezo. got him. It's Izo. I'll try my best. This time next week, it's gonna be me saying Izo and you saying Izo. No. Where did we go wrong? Never, ever, ever. Yep, all right, going down to one Dawn for Magyar. Here it is. Power play turn. Let's see it. Commit the play. Okay, discard. Counter, counter over, counter. Come on. Come on, do it. Yeah, okay, there's oh, no he way. He might do it. He might do it. No. Nah. <laughs> Pitch five cards. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's too bad. Oh, that is a 
Oh, okay, I will say, like... Oh, oh, and the new gate rip again! Yeah, I guess it's, it makes sense to do more hits, just be, to make sure you're closer, you're, you're more consistent on hitting the new gate, but... We don't have a Kuzan, if he has another Whitebeard in hand. That's true. But we do have... Yeah, because the Aisho won't do it. I mean... Uh, Isho. Isho and uh, Suru would be able to get he there. Got another he Isho got another Isho. And he got another new gate anyways. That you know... I'm no scientist, but I think the best play to do when my opponent plays a new gate mm. is play my own new gate, which in this case is just play a second E show. I don't think he has the cards in hand for it, though. I think he does. I, he had a lot of cards in hand, and he just played one card. I don't think he does. I think he does. I still don't. I could it's, I could verify and walk over there. We'll verify and see right now if he plays it or not. So we'll wait and watch. <laughs> wait and watch and no commentary. To see if I'm right or wrong. And then, like, as soon as we find out, like, one of us is like, yeah. And, like, the other was like, oh. Oh, man. Misplay, honestly. It does not look like he's. Oh. It doesn't happen. Oh, yet. because MacGyver has less than six cards in hand. Oh. <laughs> Probably it's like five. He has five, yeah. <laughs> he most definitely has, like,. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, see, oh, that is man. less than six. <laughs> My math degree comes in handy again today. That is true. You have a math degree. I do not. I, I sure do. It's just a minor, but it's still minorly better than you at math, I guess. Accredited board. <laughs> 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 All right. Well, uh, yeah, just just some simple swinging. So, uh, I think he's just going to play blue now here, right? Yeah, I don't think he's going to try it. Yeah, I don't think getting rid of Newgate's the way. This is just a 9 to 8. Oh, Radical Beam feels bad. That's yeah, okay. Bruno. He pitched two cards, which means now he has three cards in hand. Four cards now. All right, but you can't get rid of Bluno with a White Beard swing. But if you play Ace. If you play Ace, then yeah, you can. We're and you probably, probably win. Dead. Yes. If we are Clay, which I am not. Okay, he doesn't have. We, we are not Clay. No. Uh -uh. Neither of us are Clay. Mm -mm. Neither of us are playing this deck right now. No. We are here. And now that I know the deck is good, I, I will cease to play it. Oh, yeah. I forget. You only play bad decks. I only play decks to make sure if they're bad or good. All right? I've confirmed that Rob Lucci is probably pretty dang good. Then what is... Back to Iceberg. No, please. <laughs> please don't play Iceberg again. Man, I was hard considering it. Like, there has to be some way this deck is playable. No. No. Oh, new gate number two. Oh, no. Call it the old two gate. Oh. Uh, uh, that's eight. Uh, that's, eight that's eight to... All right. Okay, okay. Uh, that's ten. Yeah, that's yeah. fine. Oh, that's nine. And only three cards in MacGyver's hand. I. Th you need to have three swings go in. Well, we have the E-show for ten. Yep. Leader twice. Uh, leader once. Do you E-show for... Kaku. Ten, yeah. So one on E shows ten, four on Kaku is ten, mm -hmm. and then you have ten with leader. So we can do three ten k swings right now. Additionally, we could do something cute where we just uh, we put L ten underneath leader, and then uh, swing at the new gate, and then lose. <laughs> yeah, that would be a good it, way to lose. That would be a super good way to lose. Yeah. I figured it out. I mean, you could put like one underneath I show, um, and then what you put nine under. So it's fourteen actually. I think you could guarantee clear. No, you can't guarantee. You'd almost guarantee clear. Actually, unless he counters out of the swing with like a rad beam. Yeah, it'd have to be rad beam, and then. Then fourteen clears it. Yeah, yeah. But that's still bad because then we lose the game. All right, All right, so taking it going down to zero. Oh. Oh, he's just saying I I am done for the day. Fifteen so to... to rad beam two k two k two k. Oh, is he not has it. no events. Oh, that's it. Rob Lucci gets it. Clay and wins. Dang. You always, you always think they have it. And then the one time they don't, it's in grand finals. <laughs> it's grand finals. <laughs> wow, Lucci wins. That's crazy. Clay. Hello. Are you happy that you won? I am. Thank you. That's been it. Thank you for watching out. Good night, guys. That's going to be it. No, just kidding. So uh, you were playing Lucci, right? Yep. You've been enjoying that a lot, this meta? Or what are your thoughts of it? Um. Yeah, I think there's... A really high skill skill cap when it comes to certain matchups, mm -hmm. um, specifically red. Um, 
thankfully, like the last game right there, he just didn't have it. Mm -hmm, if he mm -hmm. had it, obviously, in yeah. the spot where I lose. Yeah, for sure. Um, going on the play against Whitebeard's really tough, and he was first seed coming in, so it was an uphill battle for me. Mm -hmm. um, but when he rad me in the turn prior, I figured he didn't really have anything in his hand, so mm -hmm. I just went for it. Yeah. Uh, my matchups today have been generally good. I did you play against any yellow today? Uh, no, I did not actually. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I played against yellow yesterday mm -hmm. um, at locals, which is pretty much the same crowd. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. A little bit more here. Um, I would say that matchup is really favorable, but there is times where they hit like, you know, three, four triggers. They do. Yeah, yeah. Just yeah. tough spot. It's just yeah. it is what it is. For sure. So, but yeah, what would, would you say the hardest matchup is for for Lucci then? Uh, law. Law. Okay. Sure. Okay. Yeah. okay. Just because uh, you just have a hard time with the blockers and like them getting the you know game more advantage throughout the game or. Yeah, it's a hard time keeping up. Um, they can swing really minimal and they can do it consistently, like you know three, four times a turn. Yeah. Yeah. Um, naturally, black as a color have never been able to keep up with that. Mm -hmm. It was a tough matchup set two. It's a tough matchup set three. I think it'll probably always be a tough matchup because. Inherently, black doesn't have any like, uh, like plus cards per se. Sure. Like for example, Khalifa's draw two, discard two. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. We're not, we're not really adding cards. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, the only thing I can think of is that I think we get like that Shanks in the the Black Star deck that clears out one cost. Sure, sure, but it, it requires like an immense amount of setup though. Too. Yes, exactly. So. so, and and then they kind of play into it as well. Yeah, so. Yeah. I mean, so sure, if it like it all works out, it works out, right? And for sure. Specifically, that would be really good against Law. Mm -hmm. But. We have to get there. Yeah. And that requires, like, 8-drop Isho or, like, 10-drop Kuzan, then Shanks. And mm -hmm, that's, mm -hmm. like, kind of a world that we live in right now. We're already in trouble by then. Sure. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, well, I know you've been tired. Uh, you've been playing all day. Yeah, uh, It's long been a long day. one. Uh, so I won't, I won't keep you up much longer. Uh, but thank you for coming out. Congratulations for winning with Rob Lucci. Thank uh, you. And uh, enjoy your boxes. Hope you get some good pulls from that, too. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you very it. much. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah.